And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday Night Wine Stream and another exciting episode of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and tonight we're going to open up uh, a wine with a very interesting name to it, and I'm going to uh, correlate it with some uh, other things like some old TV shows. That should be a lot of fun. We have a lot of birthdays to toast tonight. We have a lot of birthdays to toast. This is February, so uh, we're going to get right to that, and uh, we're probably going to have to make it quick. I won't be doing a lot of introductions for the birthday people tonight because I just got to get through them all. But uh, I'll <laughs> we'll get through them. We'll, we'll toast everyone. We're going to make sure that everyone gets toasted. <laughs> I'm pretty sure by the time I finish this wine, I'll be a little toasted too. <laughs> so... Anyway, if you're joining me for the first time, this is Drink with Rick. This is a stream of consciousness kind of show. I do have some show notes, and I have them right here with me as always. I don't always follow them verbatim. I'm not sure how well I'm going to follow them tonight, because this show isn't about me. It's about the wine, somewhat. But this is really about you and me, you and me together, just getting together on a Saturday night, kicking back and having a great time. And uh, I think we're going to have a great time tonight because this is going to be kind of an open chat night. You really steer the show because you're in the chat and you're talking with me. I'm talking with you. And we're all talking to each other. You steer the show. And uh, pretty much there's a lot of what you want to talk about. We don't talk about politics or religion on the show. So let's, uh, you know, let's keep it cool. And, uh, you know, let's, 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 let's keep it uh, a, a good, fun time for everyone. This is kind of our escapism here on Saturday night to forget the troubles of the world for a while and just kind of kick back and relax. Just have some us time, you know, just have a little us time. That That's what this is all about. Now, if you're joining me for the first time or for the 103rd time, uh, you can watch and you can chat live on Facebook, on our Facebook page at Drink with Rick, on the YouTube channel is Drink with Rick, on Twitch it's Drink with Rick one, Drink with Rick the number one, and on Twitter at Drink with Rick, uh, Twitter's uh, courtesy via Periscope. I'm not sure how long, much longer that's going to last because I understand uh, Periscope is going to be uh, uh, changing some things here. We'll we'll see how it goes in the next month or so. And of course, you can watch live on Drink With Rick at the website, drinkwithrick.com. Now, I don't have a chat going there, but I have a comments box. Uh, if you click on the page for that show, that post for the episode that you're watching now, uh, if you're watching it on the website, there is a comment box that should pop out and just comment to me and I will respond in, uh, in kind. Also, you can email me at rick at savoyamedia.com. Of course, the podcast version of this show of this episode goes out Monday nights, Monday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern time, every Monday night. And you can catch it if you go to uh, drinkwithrick.com. You can subscribe to the show right there on the subscribe page. At, uh, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, Android, Stitcher, Radio, Blueberry.com, iHeartRadio, Deezer, Amazon Music, Podcast Index. And, of course, by email, if you click on the button... Uh, to subscribe by email, just type in your email address and you'll get the latest episode of Drink with Rick as soon as it drops. And, and no salesman will call. This is just for subscribing to the show. That's pretty much it. Now, I can tell you that that, that email system works because I subscribed to it myself a long time back uh, to the podcast I do for my day job, which is the two-way radio show podcast. Just po posted an episode last night, and lo and behold, it, it wasn't it was I don't know it wasn't very long after that that I got an email notification that said, "Hey, a new episode of the two-way radio show podcast is ready." And uh, I could just click on it and listen to it right then and there. So I know it's working. Uh, so uh, don't be afraid to, to try it out. And, uh, and, and hey, it's, it's an easy way to listen to the show. It really is. Okay, so tonight we have, we're going to be trying uh, a wine, this wine. This is a marionette. This is a Jumilla. It is a Spanish wine from Spain, 50% Monastrell and 50% Syrah. This is what we're going to be opening up and drinking tonight. It uh, has a lot of alcohol in it, so we'll see how that how that plays. I'll try to go easy on the wine tonight, as I'm going to try to go easy on the show. Uh, let's check the chat first before we go into anything, and uh, let's find out who's on Twitch. Twitch, uh, okay, Barnstar is uh, in, in the chat on Twitch. Barnstar, it's great to see you. He says, bonjour, monsieur Rick. 
thank you. Thank you, and, and good good evening to you too, Barnstar. Uh, t- I take it we're studying some French tonight, right? <laughs> A little bit of French there. That's good. Uh, Barnstar says, wish I had my birthday this week so I could pile on yet another birthday. <laughs> Trust me, we have plenty of birthdays. And that Square Guy's in the chat. That Square Guy's always great to see you. One of my favorite uh, streamers on Twitch and uh of course, uh, that square guy, he d- I've talked about him many times before. He does these Lego videos where he builds uh, uh, Lego kits and do it, does it live, talks to everyone in the chat. He also plays some games, uh, Breath of the Wild, things like that. And also, he and Darcy do some cooking videos, which are always fun to watch. So uh, please check out that square guy. He's on Twitch, that square guy. A lot of fun, and he, he's really good in the chat. I, I love just hanging out in his chats. It's a lot of fun, and he's a great guy to talk to. He and Darcy both are, are, are great people to, to chat with, and, and uh, I, trust me, check him out, and you'll have a great time. You really will. Even if you're not into Legos or, or gaming or cooking videos, uh, yeah, you can still have a good time in the chat. It's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, the score guy says, hi, Rick. I'm mowing the lawn at my mom's house, so I'm going to be audio only for a while, but glad to be here again. Wow. Uh, well, just concentrate on the lawn. <laughs> I don't want to distract you from, from mowing, but uh, I've uh, made those errors before. But, hey, uh, be safe mowing the lawn, and, uh, hey, I'm glad you're listening. Glad you're listening. Uh, I, I hope everything is going well with you. I don't have a lawn to mow right now because it's the dead of winter here, and... Uh, <laughs> in North Carolina, so there isn't much lawn for me to mow, but uh, hopefully uh, springtime will be here soon and we can get our lawns back in, in shape very shortly. Barnstar says, uh, this is my Saturday night cal- uh, comfort stream and I love being here. My Saturday night comfort stream. Well, Barnstar, thank you. I really appreciate that. And uh, who else is in here in the chat? Let's see. Uh, Barnstar says, square guy is such a nice square guy for helping his mom like that. He is. He is indeed. And uh, square guy says, what kind of son would I be if I didn't? That's, 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 that. There you go. He's a good man. He's a good man. Norbert's in the chat. Norbert, uh, he's in the chat on Facebook. Norbert, it is great to see you here, my friend. Uh, Norbert says, now I'm not a wine drinker because when I was young, my parents would take me along back in the mid to late 70s, and I recall the smell of dry. He says, uh, dry wines and that smell was not pleasant to me what kind of wine would you recommend i might try to get into wine well that's a good question i i I would say if you're not really into dry wines try something that's a little bit more fruity like maybe uh or maybe buttery Uh, buttery like a chardonnay that's a soft buttery wine a good chardonnay something fruity like uh well like the wine we tried uh what was it uh week before last the birichino that is a um that's a Malvasia. That's a Malvasia. And that has a lot of nice fruit flavors in it. And you won't really have the dry, so much the dry uh, uh, red taste. And it's, it is a little bit of a drier wine. It's kind of semi-dry, but it's, it's it, a little, little on the sweeter side. Just a, it's just a hint. But I, I think you might like that, Norbert. But Norbert is an old friend of mine. Uh, he goes way back with uh, fellow podcasters and... Uh, well, uh, you know what? If I keep talking like this, we're never going to get to the wine. I'm going to get back to you, Norbert. We, we stick around. We're going to get back to you a little bit later. And Ed's in the chat. My good friend Ed uh, Anthony's in the chat. He says, "Chat, <laughs> it's great to see you, Ed. As always, by the way, um, your book, your five, Ed won the 500 plus dad jokes book last week on the on the show last week, and uh, it's on its way to you, Ed. You should be receiving it within the next uh, couple of days, within uh, maybe my Monday or Tuesday at the latest. I'm not sure. It depends on the post office, but you should be getting it shortly. Anyway, it is good to see you here, and uh, Norbert says, OG podcasting. Yes, old guard podcasting. Yes, absolutely, and I, you know, he, his shows was one that I watched, uh, I watched one was, his show is one that I listened to regularly and um i believe i even um uh, i guessed it on an episode as well or guest hosted on an episode for him so uh norbert's uh, great to see you here my friend okay let's get to the wine here before i get two two in the weeds here with the chat at the moment because we're going to get back it's an open chat but let's open the wine first so <laughs> so we can get to chatting here is the wine that we're going to be drinking it's a marionette um a jamila it's a Spanish wine from Spain, 2017. 50% Monastrell, 50% Syrah, 
And um, I'm going to read a little bit on the back. There's not a whole lot to read on the back, but I'll read a little bit of this. And uh, it says, oh, that's the government warning. I'm not going to read that. It's uh, imported by Trivin Imports Incorporated in uh, Rochelle, in New Rochelle, New York. Alcohol 14.5% by volume in the 750 milliliter bottle. Not a whole lot on the back about the wine itself too much, but uh, I have some information on the wine that I pulled up. But let's go ahead and open the bottle of wine and let it open up the glass first, and then we'll get to to more information about this wine and about the uh, well. About all kinds of things. We'll, we'll get back to the chat here shortly. Why is this not cutting? This is my foil cutter, and I must be. I know I've used this foil cutter for a long time. It looks like it's sort of uh, getting dull. And uh, I've got my mechanical corkscrew tonight because it has a cork in it. This is wonderful, isn't it? It was a gift from my wife, Chi. My lovely wife, Chi. She uh, gave me one to replace the one that I broke on the show. I broke it on the show uh, about this time last year. <laughs> so that's, uh, there you go. So um, I've got, oh, this is dripping a little bit. Okay, I've got my Veneto. I've got my Veneto. Uh, yeah, I just washed it again <laughs> just for the show. I have my Veneto aerator from the Veneto Wine Lover set which you can actually purchase on my website at drinkwithrick.com. There's a big banner there it, 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 you buy it from uh, Amazon. And if you make the purchase there, I might get a few cents from it, maybe. I haven't received any money from Jeff Bezos yet. I know I've paid him pretty, uh, a pretty penny. I've, uh, I've paid him a lot of money. Put all kinds of stuff on his site. And, uh, but, but, you know... Well, let's see. I think I just lost my audio here for just a second. Did I lose my audio? Uh, okay. I think, uh, can everybody see me on Facebook? Facebook's hanging up for me a little bit. Hopefully that's not, uh, let me switch over. I know it's still uh, running on uh, YouTube. Hopefully, hopefully Facebook will recover for me. You, you guys can see me on Facebook okay? It hasn't stopped for anybody. Um, She's, uh, my lovely wife, Cheese in the chat, she says, uh, Norbert, I'm with you there, but when I tried white wine and Cabernet Sauvignon, it's not too dry at all. And uh, she says, we can hear you. Okay, good, good. So it's so still running for you guys. It's just not running for me. Um, it's Facebook. Actually, I think it, what it might be is it might be my, my browser. I've got to switch browsers here. I've got to, I'm going to be switching computers. Oh, i got to tell you something about that, but that's for later. Anyway, let's go ahead and let this wine open up so we can um, try it out. In the meantime, I pulled up some information on the wine. And uh, the wine that I have here, this marionette wine, I'm, I'm going to read this. I, I went to the, uh, this is from uh, Igo, Igo Bodegas. That's the, the uh, winery. And uh, from, I'm going to read a little bit from this website this is coming from their website they say that uh, the grapes were chosen among the best pl uh, plots selecting only those that could express exactly what we were looking for with this wine the harvest was both manual and mechanical so it was a mix harvesting grapes some manual harvesting and some mechanical there's an important difference there because uh, sometimes mechanical harvesting grapes some grapes uh, you want to be careful that you don't damage or bruise the grapes too much and uh, for some wines for some grapes uh, that they can bruise easily, hand picking is uh, preferred, and sometimes the only way to really get those grapes out without without damaging too much before they they're squeezed and all that sort of thing. So he um, says the fermentation or the website says the fermentation and the maceration, depending on the variety, was made in contact with the peels and stainless steel tanks for 15 to 25 days. So uh, and then it was aged in American oak barrels for two to three months. Now this is a this is a blend, this is a red blend, 50% Monastrell and a 50% Syrah. And this should be an interesting blend. Now I'm 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 guessing that um, I, I I guessing that should have kind of a more of a, 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 a cherry or a, or a, a berry taste to it and uh, Maybe have a, a little notes of uh, might be really really fruity. So we're gonna we're gonna try this out, and it's probably very dry. It's probably very dry wine. We'll see. Um, but they're saying 14% alcohol, and it says 14.5% alcohol in the bottle. And we all know on the show 
That's not necessarily true. So usually, usually it's a lot higher than what is posted on the model. But we're going to try, we're going to find out in just a, a few moments. Uh, I checked on, uh, Vivino has a 3.6 star rating for the 2018, and they have a, um, um, and that's th this next year, I don't have, I have the 2017, and they have a 3.7 rating for the 2017, and according to, the, to Vivino, this vintage rates better than any other year for the wine. So, unless maybe it was before 2018. <laughs> okay, so I checked around for pricing, and Wine Searcher has this bottle of wine going from $9.98 a bottle. It only listed one place, which was Wineworks Online in New Jersey uh, for $9.98 a bottle. But I can tell you what I paid for because I purchased it at Wine Store, my good friends at Wine Store here. Uh, I purchased it in, uh, for. This is uh, $8.99 a bottle, $8.99 a bottle from our local wine store uh, in uh, Blakeney, North Carolina, which you can visit them at winestore-online.com. So we're going to give this a little bit of a whiff, and we're going to give it a little bit of a taste, and then we're going to see uh, just what is in. Let me check, make sure everything's cool. Okay, everything's cool over here. Um, Make sure we're still on a line here. Okay, there we are. I don't know what's going on with my Facebook feed. I have, I have no idea. All right, so let's give it a whiff. And as expected, fruity, fairly fruity, although interesting. I can smell a little bit of, uh, on the nose, there's a little bit of, interesting, a little bit of, uh, I want to see a little knit licorice, a little little hint of licorice, and uh, something else. That it's it's uh, kind of oaky, kind of oaky. It smells a little bit earthy, a little bit earthy. So let me give it a taste. Okay. Okay, uh, a little bit of blueberry, I think. A little blueberry in there. A blackberry, uh, some, some black uh, berries in there. Let's see, a little blueberry and blackberry. Hint of cherry, hint of cherry, not unexpected. Some red fruits, but, but mostly I'm getting some blueberry and blackberry. Now, it tasted a little, I mean, it, it, it smelled a little bit earthy and it smells a little bit like wet leaves but it doesn't really have that taste to it what i'm getting though i'm i'm a little hint of licorice i think a little bit of vanilla in this a little bit of vanilla in it very interesting it is a fairly bold wine not expected it, it is fairly fairly bold it has a it's actually a pretty dark complexion it has a, it looks fairly full-bodied it does look fairly full-bodied but it's it's not um, it's not too bold. I mean, it's fairly bold, but it's not too bold. And uh, it is on the dry side. So Norbert, I don't know if you would really like this kind of wine too much because it is very dry. But um, not well. It's it's not the driest wine I've had. Obviously not. I've had drier wines than this, but it is a little on the dry side. There are some there are some tannins in it, but it's not. It's sort of medium medium. It's it's not a lot. And it's fairly smooth. It's fairly smooth. And it does have a bit of a lingering finish, but it doesn't linger too long. A little bit of a lingering finish. Not, not bad. Not bad. Let's go back to the chat for just a minute. And um, Norbert's, uh, let's see. Um, okay, Norbert says, yes, all okay. Read you five by five. I My video is gone on Facebook, so I can't monitor my video on Facebook anymore. So uh, let me know if anything funny happens. Norbert says you froze and now you're back. I don't know what's going on with face, face, Facebook. I really don't. But I'm, I'm coming through uh, on, you know, if you have trouble, if you have trouble watching the stream here, you can always check it out on YouTube or on Twitch. Uh, you can check it out at either of those places and, uh, and on Twitter too. So it, it looks like all of those feeds are going okay. You guys are doing fine on uh, Twitch. There we go. So that's 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 all right. 
And uh, Norbert says, I should be able to find a fruity wine here where I live. I'm in Elk Grove, California, near to Napa, Fresno, Modesto, and Lodi, all decent winemaking areas. Yes, you're right in the center of everything. <laughs> yes, in, in Elk Grove, yes, you, um, you're you within um, a very short distance to, to, I mean, a lot of the different different wineries and a lot of the different vineyards. And, uh, wow, you have pretty much have all those all those at your disposal, uh, and, you know, where you can get to very easily. Wow, I, that would be, uh, yeah, that, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> not a play, not a bad place to be. Not a bad place to be. Let's check out. Uh, uh, let me check. Okay, nothing going on on YouTube. Let's check Twitch for a minute because I know we have a lot of activity on on Twitch. Um, yeah, uh, Barnstar says uh, Zell. Oh, Zowie, a uh, 14.5% alcohol by volume, ABV, oh my. Yeah, it is. He says, go easy on that for sure tonight, Rick. I will try, but I tell you what, we have a lot of toasting to do, so maybe I'll just take small sips. Uh, love seeing the major aerator installation. It's like you're the uh, wine scientist ready to discover the many mysteries of the wine averse. The wine averse, I like that. That's a pretty good rating on average, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's not bad. And uh, Score Guy says, do you like licorice? My dad loved it and always had a bag of licorice all sorts by the chair, by his chair. And yes, I do like licorice. I like it a lot. But you have to be careful about licorice because, it, you know, it, real licorice. Now, there, there's the, the kind of licorice candy that isn't really real licorice, licorice just a licorice flavor. And then there is, there is the kind of candy that has real licorice on it. In it. And um, you want to be careful not having too much of that because... Licorice has a, uh, it does send your heart rate up. It, it actually is a stimulant. It sends your heart rate uh, up quite a bit. So you want to kind of uh, have that in moderation, uh, just like this one. So 14 half percent alcohol by volume. So and Barsha um, says <laughs> Facebook and uh, oh and it's got MT uh, is that MTHW? Okay, it's got MT. HW uh, is in the chat. It's good to see you, Scott. Good to see you here. It says, is it okay to mix vodka with red wine? I've never tried it, to be honest. I, I don't know. I'd, I've never tried it. I've had vodka and I've had wine, but uh, I never, I've never tried mixing the two. Would be be very interesting. Uh, yeah, you might want to be careful about that. <laughs> I don't know if the, it would taste very good. I'm, I'm not sure. It depends on the wine, I think. It depends on the on the wine. Also depends a little bit on the vodka, I think. So uh, let's get back here. Uh, Norbert says, uh, I sh should be able to, oh, I read that. He says, uh, tons around large wineries and the small independents too. Yeah, a lot of independent wineries. Are in, um, I like going to the smaller ones uh, a good deal of time because you find some very, very interesting wines in the smaller wineries sometimes uh, you know, that aren't really bulk produced or mass produced. A lot of really interesting wines, a lot of interesting flavors and and uh, blends and things like that. Very cool. I like that. Okay, we have some food to pair it with. We got to get to the food pairing here. Um, and tonight I have to pair it with because it is getting kind of cold. <laughs> I have here what is this? Uh, it looks like filet mignon and a little bit of filet mignon, and I have a little bit of pizza and a little bit of ziti, baked ziti, both from. Uh, both of these are from um, Brooklyn Pizza up here, up the road in, in North Carolina, in Charlotte. I also have some, well, let's see, we have some, what is this? Oh, it's a Colby Jack cheese, and then we have the the Trader Joe's double cream gouda that I love so much, and that we've never had a miss on this show yet with the, uh, with the double cream gouda. Okay, let's go ahead and give this a try. We're gonna try first. We're gonna try the. We're gonna try the steak. A monastrel, a Syrah blend, should go very, very well with the steak. Fill the glass up just a little bit more. Mmm, an excellent steak. It's leftovers. This is all leftovers, folks. <laughs> but sometimes leftovers are really, really good. All right. A little chewy, but good. Mm. Oh yeah, nice pairing, nice pairing, 
with the um, with the steak, with the uh, and, and uh, what is this? <laughs> it's a nice pairing with this the steak and the uh, and the wine. I like that very much. Let me clear the palate for just a minute. Now, clearing the palate does a couple of things with the water. Uh, the water does two things. If you have the water in between that, it clears the palate, but also if you have some water in between glass and wine, it, especially red wine, it actually helps to cut down uh, for those who are concerned about the red wine headache effect that you get the next morning, and that's due to uh, a lot of the tannins. That's used due to a lot of the sulfites that are in the wine. Uh, you get wine with a lot of sulfite, especially with a higher alcohol content. You'll get those wine headaches from red wine. Um, and having some water in between the glasses of wine eliminates a lot of that. It cuts down a lot of it, so you don't have really that much of a problem. And plus, it's good for you. The water is good for you. So uh, let's try it with the... Uh, I'm going to have to take this apart a little bit. <laughs> I don't have any... Using a cracker to do that with and that didn't work out too well I got cracker all over the place um, let's try it with a ziti this should work well with the big ziti I'm expecting this to be very good with the big ziti and um, it's good to try mm. ziti is really good by the way very good I can taste a little more of the alcohol with the wine when I get the ziti and the cheese in there. I tasted the alcohol was a little more prominent, which I don't know if I like that too much. But it, it does pair well with the ziti and the cheese. I just don't like the fact that because there's so much alcohol in there, if this was a lower alcohol content, it would be a lot more pleasant to drink. But I, I'm, I'm getting a little bit more of the alcohol from the wine from that pairing. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing if you like to taste the alcohol. Me, I prefer to have... Uh, less alcohol and more more fruit in the wine and uh, pairing it with the the foods so you know that's that's okay I mean it's it's not bad it, it did not pair that badly with it it's it's okay I did like it with the steak though the steak was really good we'll clear the palate again one more time let's try it with a little bit of pizza we're gonna put a little gluten in the mix and try it. now this is a, this pizza has some uh, ground beef on it so um, sometimes it depends on what you have on top of the pizza not just the cheese but you know maybe a little black olive or a little pepperoni or mushrooms or something like that some wines go really well with mushrooms so you have pizza with with mushrooms on it and pick a good wine for that wow hey I like that, and it brings out more of the taste of the uh, of the pizza crust. Uh, in that, somewhat more gluten. <laughs> now, if you, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I would I would say if if you don't want to to have it with a pizza, I would say that uh, uh, next thing have it with the steak. The pizza is good though. I like the pizza. Let's clear the palate one more time and let's try it. Let's start trying it with cheeses. Try it with the cheese. We'll, we'll try it first with the Colby Jack. I don't expect issues with this. Colby Jack is usually a pretty safe cheese to pair, or a Colby or a Monterey Jack, any combination of. Usually, pretty safe bet with a lot of wines. If you're going to be pairing wines, uh, uh, even white wines, red wines specifically, you're going to have a party. Serve some Colby cheese, serve some Monterey Jack, a Colby Jack cheese, something like that. That's a pretty safe bet with uh, with the wines, with with a lot of them. And this is a good cheese. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. Good mix, good mix. I like that very much. Let me see. Uh, Barnstar says, curious to see how the pizza will pair with the wine since it is uh, such a complex, multi-layered food. And as I mentioned before, yeah, I read that a little late. But I mentioned before, it really depends on what you put on top of the pizza. Like a pineapple pizza. Have a pineapple pizza. Yeah, people do. I've had pineapple pizza. It's not bad. Pineapple pizza. Um, that one can be a little tough to mix with, although I, I would say probably get a, a good white wine. 
I think I think a Chardonnay might go okay with a pineapple pizza. I don't know. I've never tried a Chardonnay with it, so I might be completely wrong there. But it seems to me that that buttery kind of tasting Chardonnay, mixing with the cheese, but because it's a white wine and, and uh, a little bit on the, the you know one that's a little bit more tart uh, and, and and fruity that would mix well with the pineapple uh, that might be good, or maybe a Sauvignon Blanc that, that might, or a Pinot Grigio. Uh, Pinot Grigio might might work, or you know that, that Malvasia might work. The one that we had uh, a couple of weeks ago that might work. And uh, Barnstar says, "Oh, Rick, you're killing me, man, with all the talk about pizza topping." <laughs> that sounds like great pairing. Yeah, uh, it's actually a good. I like a really good uh, wine with a really good pizza. So. Uh, Let's see, uh, quite on Facebook. I hope we didn't lose everybody on Facebook. Uh, let me know if I, because I'm complete, I completely lost the feed on Facebook. So uh, right here on stream, anything going on on Twitter at the moment? Not really, but uh, it looks like the action's happening on Twitch. Okay, we did a lot of pairing. Let me clear the palette one more time. We're going to try it with the Trader Joe's Double Cream Gouda, and I'm not expecting an issue with that. Let's try it with the Trader Joe's Double Cream Gouda. Here it is. Available from Trader Joe's. One of my favorite cheeses. I have to fill the... Yes, I do have to pull it more in the glass. Don't worry, there's plenty. Mm. Trying to go easy on the wine. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's good. Now it's a little bit, has a little hint of sourness in it at the very beginning. Finishes off really nicely. Not as smooth and creamy as some of the other wines we've tasted, but it still works very well. I like that. I like the, the Gouda. Gouda wins again. Of course, the Gouda wins again. Let's uh, put this, oh, I've got one more thing to show you. I have one more thing. I can't even get closer on this close-up, but my wife... Uh, late this afternoon, my wife uh, said, I want some cake. And, uh, you know, uh, we had some birthday cake here last week. I tried that with the wine at the very end of the show. She says, I'm in the mood for some cake. And uh, I said, okay. And she says, I'm going to go down to Nothing Bunt Cakes and get a cake. And I'm saying, you know, it's like 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 5 o'clock almost on, on, a, on, on a Saturday. You're going to go down there and get a cake now. She says, yep, I'm, not, I'm in the mood for a cake. I'm like, what are you? Are you pregnant or something? <laughs> uh, had me there for a second. But uh, no, seriously, she went down and got a, uh, a nothing but cake. She picked up a, a, uh, a red velvet cake. And I said, well, can you, can you get a lemon cake? Because I love the lemon cakes there. And she, said, and she brought back this. She brought back this little tiny lemon cake for me from Nothing Bunt Cakes. Yes, a little lemon cake. So uh, maybe by the, the before the end of the stream tonight, I'll open it up and I'll try it with the wine. If that doesn't give me a sugar rush, I don't know what will. So we'll we'll see. <laughs> yeah, Barnstar says, winner, winner, chicken dinner with the Gouda. Yes, absolutely. It was very good. The Gouda was Gouda. Very good. Uh, and, um, okay, so let's see. Where were we? Okay, we got the uh, the pairing out of the way. So we got birthdays and anniversaries. I really hope that uh, Facebook comes back. You know, I'm going to do something really. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a little bit of a, a – let, let me uh, – I hate to do this, but I am going to try – to recover this on Facebook for just a moment because uh, I want to see if it's actually still streaming on Facebook. It looks like, yeah, it's still streaming on Facebook. How about that? It's on a big delay, but it's still streaming. I don't know what's happening with uh, with my Facebook feed, my live feed. So I, I don't know. Folks, uh, let me know on Facebook. If you see it drop or something, let me know right away because uh, I think the chat's still live. I think uh, the chat's been kind of quiet there for a few minutes. But uh, And then Norbert said I froze for, uh, for a short bit. But uh, hopefully it's not going to really be an issue. I don't know. We have plenty of bandwidth here. We have plenty of bandwidth here tonight, not like it used to be uh, when it first started out. Uh, we're, we're actually on a fiber 
uh, connection now. We're on a, we, we got fiber finally, and we, we have plenty of bandwidth. So it should not be an issue with sending the feed over. But, uh, you know, yeah, we're moving up in the world here. <laughs> fiber, finally. Took long enough. But uh, it's, it's very cool. So, Barnstar um, <laughs> says the lemon cake is so cute. Yeah, it is. It is kind of, it's a cute little lemon cake. It is. I can hardly wait to try it out. And uh, it says, uh, Barnstar says, Mark Zuckerberg doesn't deserve this much of your attention during your live stream. Sigh. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, well, I'm not going there now. I don't want him to cut, him, cut me off altogether now, do we? <laughs> So uh, here we go. Uh, birthdays and national days. I have a lot of birthdays, and I hope everyone on, on Facebook uh, can can watch this because I have a lot of folks, a lot of my friends on Facebook to toast. Let's fill up the glass a little bit. Cue the fireworks, and here we go. First, my first birthday toast is going to go to my good friend Betsy. Now, I toasted her last week. Two of these people I toasted last week, but I want to toast them again because they're such good friends. And because their birthdays were so close to this weekend, I felt like I really needed to toast them one more time. So my good friend Betsy Ollinger, Betsy, here's to you, my good friend. Happy, happy birthday. It's my good friend Betsy, Betsy Ollinger, and also my good friend Rhonda, Rhonda Poe who I used to work with at WFL way back in the day. And uh, Rhonda, I know she's been out, uh, enjoying herself there, ah, the beach and all kinds of stuff. Hey, babe, I'll tell you what, hopefully this pandemic will let up and, and we'll all be able to go out and, and, uh, and things will get somewhat back to normal. We'll all go out and about. You know, Florida's pretty much open. Uh, we, we don't, in North Carolina, we're not that open. Now, we're not completely shut in, but we're not that open. So, um, anyway, here's to Rhonda. Happy, happy birthday to you. Your birthday was on the 18th as well. Another February baby, just like, just like me and just like my daughter Tia and, uh, just like Betsy and, and all these other people on the list were all February babies. Uh, and I, a lot of people born in February. How about that? I guess I was born in a good month for that, huh? Anyway, here's to Rhonda, my good friend Rhonda. Happy, happy birthday. Rhonda Cooper Pope. Okay, I have another birthday to toast, and this is for Jamie, my friend Jamie Bowling. And Jamie, I actually met them, I met Jamie online, uh, basically. Not in person yet, but um, as a guest on uh, uh, an episode of uh, Sean Yesner's podcast. Uh, which is, uh, uh, which of course I, I listen to a lot, and he's Sean's also a good friend of mine, a fellow podcaster. Anyway, here's to you, Jamie. Happy, happy birthday to you, my good friend. Jace, uh, to I haven't had enough of this wine yet. I'm already wixing my words up. Here's to Jamie Bowling. Happy birthday. Your birthday is on Monday, this coming Monday, the 22nd. Happy birthday. And may you have many, 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 many more. Also, yeah, I know I'm flying through the birthday toast quick. I kind of have to <laughs> tonight. Got to keep it kind of short, folks. This is also for uh, my friend Teresa. Teresa, who is the wife of my cousin Ernest. And, uh, and by the way, her son, her son was the ring bearer at our wedding, at Cheese and My Wedding. Um, was, he was the ring bearer there. He was only, I think, uh, what, four, five years old at the time? No, maybe he was six. I'm trying to remember now. He's all grown up now, for sure. He's definitely all grown up now. Young, fine young man. But anyway, this is for uh, my friend Teresa. Teresa Hansen, happy, happy birthday. Your birthday is on the 23rd. That is, uh, what is that, Tuesday? Yeah, it's Tuesday. Happy, happy birthday, Teresa. And may you have many, many, many more. Teresa Hansen. Another birthday. Well, I told you there are a lot of birthdays. A lot of birthdays this uh, this weekend. Another uh, birthday for my friend Scott. My good friend Scott, who uh, I have a connection with because he uh, owns Seven Jars. Seven Jars Brew. Uh, this is a, a winery, brewery, distillery. Okay, and they started off uh, doing wine classes on how to make wine. That's how I met Scott. She and I went there with a couple of other couples that we know, 
and we went there in for a uh, session on how to make wine and it was a lot of fun we had a great time Scott was really really cool and uh, I he gave us some tour of the facility as well as as the winemaking class but afterwards I, I think he, he gave us a tour on, and, and that was at the point where he was preparing to put together a distillery he had just gotten the drums or the uh, uh, the big the huge vats and the drums to to start doing whiskey his own whiskey since then he has started doing his own whiskey there so they are doing whiskey and they're as a matter of fact when the pandemic started they switched over and started doing uh, because of the shortage of uh, uh, alcohol al isopropyl alcohol and you know, the other the uh, uh, disinfectant alcohol, they switched over for a while for doing alcohol, to produce alcohol so there, there would be enough around in the area. So anyway, here's to, to Scott, Scott uh, McClure. This is, uh, your birthday is also on, to, well no, it's on the 24th, on Wednesday. For my friend Scott McClure, here's to you, happy, happy birthday, and may you have many, many, many more. And by the way, Scott, if you're watching, we can get you on the show sometime and do uh and maybe maybe i can get back up there and do a tour he's up in charlotte maybe at some point we can do a tour um of the winery and the distillery that i can actually show on the wine stream one of these nights that could be a lot of fun doing a little tour of that really cool really cool place okay uh, another birthday that i have to toast is from my good friend steve and steve and i go way way back to our days at on force Doing, as you know, uh, in another life, I was uh, an IT service provider, had my own computer business, computer store and all that, and I did some contract work with a place called OnForce. Started off as re computerrepair.com, but it was an online um, platform where service providers could uh, connect with uh, people looking for service and, and companies looking for, to hire them, and then we did contract work that way. And Steve was a fellow uh, IT service provider there, he also, um, when I did the Force Field podcast, which started from the On Force forums, uh, Steve was one of the, I believe I, I interviewed him at some point uh, for the show. Anyway, Steve's an old friend of mine. Steve, your birthday is the 24th, Wednesday. And uh, let's see, wait a minute, I think Scott, no, Scott's, Scott's McClure, uh, his birthday's on Tuesday, Steve's on Wednesday, the 24th, so I had them all a little, little mixed up there. So Scott, your birthday was on Tuesday, is this coming Tuesday, the 23rd. Steve's on Wednesday, the 24th, sorry about that, I got my notes mixed up a little bit. Anyway, Steve, here's to you, happy, happy birthday, and may you have many, many, many more. Yeah, I know, maybe I've had too much, right? I still have birthdays to toast, still a couple more. A couple more birthdays. I have a birthday to toast for my good friend Norbert. Norbert's birthday is coming up on the 25th, right? And I got this one right, didn't I, Norbert? If he's, if he's still there, if we haven't lost everybody on Facebook. Uh, okay, Ed says still streams. That's good. Thank you, Ed. It still streams. And she says we can hear and see you okay. Okay, that's excellent. Um, Norbert, my good friend Norbert, and I, I gave him a send up at the very beginning of the show. Because uh, just because I was excited to see him, I'm, I'm excited to see everybody who comes in. I, I'm excited to see all of you. I, I really am. I, I enjoy having everybody here. Uh, but Norbert um, and I go way, way back. Uh, I first met Norbert uh, online. Never actually met him in person. One of these days, we got to meet in person, Norbert. Uh, maybe when this pandemic lets off or uh, lets up or something. But uh, we've been friends online for many, many years. We, uh, we first met each other when we were both doing our podcast. He would be doing the, the, the uh, Totally Cool Tech show, and I would be doing the Force Field podcast. And we were both members of the Tech Podcast Network. That's, uh, that's uh, uh, all about tech. If it's tech, it's here. <laughs> tech Podcast Network. And I even um, guess so. I think one point, uh, uh, Norbert... Uh, uh, came down ill for a little while, and then I, uh, I, I guest hosted a show one time to kind of keep things going. It was really cool. Uh, really enjoyed it. But anyway, uh, it, it was a great experience, and I really appreciate that experience. Anyway, uh, Norbert's an old friend of mine. Yeah, Norbert says TPN. That's right, TPN. If it's tech, it's here. <laughs> Listen to other great tech podcasts at techpodcast.com. <laughs> right. Uh, anyway, Norbert, uh, your birthday is this coming Thursday, the 25th. 
Thursday the 25th. I want to give you a, a special birthday toast, Norbert. This is my good friend Norbert Davis. Norbert, here's to you. Happy, happy birthday. And may you have many, many, many more. And you know what? I'm going to toast you again. Now, I am toasting you with red wine, but it should be okay, right? Uh, don't worry. No worries. Here's to you, Norbert. Thank you. Happy birthday. And I say thank you because I enjoyed the opportunity to to uh, work with you on, on your show a little bit. And uh, it, it, I always enjoy this kind of opportunities. They're a lot of fun. We did There was a thing we did on TPN for a while uh, where... Uh, we would do, they had the, the, the tech podcast, it was a TPN uh, weekly, what was that thing called? It was a weekly show, <laughs> but it was a, a sort of a, um, a show where every week, the, uh, you know, a different host would come in and host the show. And I did it a number of times. I, I, Norbert, I think you did too, uh, a, a couple of times, two or three times. But uh, we, we all did uh, the, uh, the tech podcast, what was that thing, the weekly uh, I forgot what it was called. <laughs> I still have the old episodes, actually. But I hosted it a number of times, and, and uh, that was a lot of fun, being part of the Tech Podcast Network. And, of course, every year we do the, we do the um, um, CES, uh, uh, do things with, C, with the Consumer Electronics Show, with the uh, Tech Podcast Network being there and all that thing. Uh, this was Todd Cochran's network, and, and I don't want to go ahead and do a big, long thing about this tonight, but uh, Todd, who, who is another old friend of mine, who I've toasted many times on the shows in, in the past, as a matter of fact. Um, so this was uh, uh, one of uh, Todd's networks, uh, or the network that he did initially, uh, along with Blueberry and Raw Voice. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going, I'm going way off base here, but that's what we do. This is a stream of consciousness kind of show. Okay, I've still got the fireworks going. We're going to be running out of fireworks here shortly. So let me get one more toast in here. Did I toast you, Norbert? Yes, I did. I'll give you one more just for good measure. Here's to you, Norbert. Happy birthday. Oh, I have one more birthday to toast. This is, uh, oh, well, I guess I better toast him. <laughs> I better, because that's where I got this wine. Um, this is from my good friend Matt, Matt Snyder. My good friend Matt, his birthday is on Thursday as well, along with Norbert's. His birthday is coming Thursday the 25th. Matt is the uh, uh, co-founder and, uh, and uh, partner, co-partner of uh, Wine Store. Wine Store, the you know, wine store that I talk about where I get my wines from, winestore-online.com. Now, I am not, I am not paid to to promote wine store i don't it's just the place where i go to get my wine and i met matt early on we started doing the show and the the the, the ladies there the great great people there great people at wine store and uh and you know and, and, and trish and molly and all those people they're really really nice people and they know their wines anyway i'd go to the wine store and after a few times and i started the the uh, after a while i'd started this the the uh I started drink with Rick, and uh, I started going in there and buying wines from them because it was it was convenient for me to buy. And the prices are great. The prices are great, and they had some really great wines. And I started doing this and and really sort of promoting it on on the show. And uh, and then I met Matt, and uh, they, they all took an interest in saying, "Wow, you do a show about wine on Saturday nights." I said, "Yeah," and I'm drinking a lot of the wines you sell. <laughs> so um, you now we become friends and. Uh, uh, Matt's a great guy, really nice guy, and he's always taking good care of me. All the people there at, at, at Wine Store have always taken great care of, uh, of me. And uh, I think the first year, after I finished the first year, year one of the show, he, uh, I, I walked in, I was going to buy a couple of wines just, just, uh, just for me, and uh, he asked me, he says, well, so you're going you're gonna to keep doing the show? Because at the time, I think when I was ending season one, I said, well, we'll, we'll see if we're going to do it for another season. We'll see if we'll do it for another year. And I walked in, the, and one of the first things he asked me, he said, are you going to do it? So you're going to do it for another year? Are you going to do it? And I said, yeah, I, I think I'm going to do it for another year. He says, that's great. That's what we love. He says, we always enjoy the show. We, we enjoy the show, and, and you got to keep doing it because it's a lot of fun. And uh, I agree with him because it has been a lot of fun. And uh, so I've, I've been doing it for another year, and we're coming up to the end of year two. Um, so anyway, Matt, here's to you. Happy, happy birthday. 
And I'm going to toast you again because I went long on this, and, and uh, it's really not supposed to be about me. It's about Matt. Matt, your birthday, 25th uh, February, Thursday, another February baby. Happy, happy birthday, and may you have many, 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 many more. Here's my good friend Matt Snyder. Okay, I think that's it for the birthdays. I think we got through the birthdays, and we still have some wine left. Oh, yeah. It's starting to fill it a little bit, though. Okay, once again, we're drinking, uh, the button didn't work there, we're drinking the Marionette. This is Marionette, this is 50% Syrah, 50% Monastrell, not necessarily in that order. It's a 2017 Jamila from Spain, and so far, I'm liking this wine. Don't, you know, okay, yeah, don't say Rick is uh, a guy who, who never met a wine he didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> or never met a wine he didn't like to drink. Okay, that's not true because there are plenty that there that there are some, not plenty, but some there that I didn't like too much, and we know that. But uh, overall, uh, I, I like this line wine. It's a it's a good it's a good uh, it's a good one. Uh, so Norbert says uh, I lost my voice during my daily podcast. That's right, you you did. That was back uh, in the day when we were doing that. Norbert said had great support from the group for about a week. Then you know what? That's the thing about the the, the the folks at TED Podcast Network. All the other podcasters there have really really kind of a close knit group, and they, they really everybody kind of took care of each other. They they really did. And uh, Norbert says, "Cheers, Rick, and anything is fine." And uh, says, uh, "Thank you, my friend. Uh, you're welcome. You're quite welcome, Norbert." Uh, Norbert says, like a round robin thing, yes, tried it for about every two months. That's right. We did that about every couple months. We'd all get around and do the, uh, what was that thing called? Um, the the uh, uh, TPN Weekly. That's what it was called. It was called, that was the name of the podcast, TPN Weekly. And all, we, all the podcasters would take turns. We'd all get on a roster and we'd take turns um, hosting the podcast. It was, it was uh, really, really fun. It was really fun. Norbert says, was able to make it out to CES 2012. One of the great times in my podcast career. You know what, Norbert? I naturally never made it out to CES in person, but what I did do, because I couldn't, my kids were young back then, and, uh, and and I just started another job and that sort of thing, so I couldn't actually make it out to CES. But what I did do is that Todd, uh, uh, I worked with Todd behind the scenes for some stuff. I would get on. You know, not only did we did I host the entire twenty four hour event, you know, for four or five days, however long it was, that was being streamed uh, on theforcefield.net. But I also uh, worked with him on uh, for a year or two on the, on the back end, helping to to uh, get some of the videos you know, set up and descriptions and things like that. I did a little bit of that for him. So, uh, so I was kind of working remotely on, on a few of those things. So it was a lot of fun. Tor Norbert says, yes, uh, T TPN Weekly. Yes, that's, that's what it was. I'm glad. And, and actually, thank you because you really reminded me that it was TPN Weekly because you said it was a weekly thing. I was saying, okay, wait a minute. TPN Weekly, that's what it was. So uh, Norbert, yeah, Norbert's on YouTube. Had to move over to YouTube. I was lucky to have fiber a decade ago. Love it. And Norbert says, looking to possibly upgrade to one gigabit Ethernet. Oh, yeah, that's so sweet. It really is. Norbert says, my wife and I are a year and 10 days apart. She's February 15th, and I'm the younger one on February 25th. You know what, Norbert? I've got, I've got news for you. I was born on February 15th, too. So here's to your wife. Here's your wife, February 15th. Happy belated birthday. Uh, Norbert, I mean, yeah, by coincidence, your wife and I were both born on February 15th. How about that? That's pretty cool. I like that. That's, I, I always, I, I like that sort of thing. Um, and uh, Barnstar says, uh, on Twitch, Barnstar says, August slash Virgo baby. Rick, did you say you're a February baby? Yes, I did. February 15th. He says, uh, oh, cool, a wine stream future guest star. Happy birthday, Matt, of the wine store. So, Matt, if you're watching or uh, listening to it later, Barnstar says, happy birthday to you. And Barnstar says, it's a two-way street, Rick. I myself never met a wine that didn't like me. <laughs> oh, happy birthday, belated birthday to you, Rick. Thank you very much, Barnstar. I appreciate it. Okay, I, I know I didn't make a big deal about it last week, but last week, yeah, it was my... Uh, of course, that was uh, it. Was a whole week last week of uh, of celebration. We had uh, my daughter Tia, you know, CM Cinder on Twitch. Her birthday was on the thirteenth, 
And then my wife, Chi and I, my lovely wife, Chi and I, we had our 27th anniversary on the 14th. And then on uh, uh, the 15th was my birthday, my birthday. And uh, that was, uh, now it was a little bit weird. My, my birthday, it was a little bit weird because... Um, no, and, and Ed, just in case you're wondering, I, I did forget to put the national dates. <laughs> I'll get those in a minute. Uh, my birthday was a little bit weird because, as you know, last last uh, week my Aunt Connie died. She was 103 years old, but she passed away. And, uh, of course, I gave her a nice a nice uh, little send-up, uh, you know, memorial on uh, uh, where I introduced her to, to everybody, all you guys, uh, here on the wine stream last Saturday night. Well, her funeral was on Monday. Uh, they scheduled her funeral for Monday afternoon uh, uh, at 1 p.m. I had taken the day off from work because I wasn't sure how long it was going to last or whatever else was going to happen. We were going to be doing other Zoom calls and things like that with the family. We couldn't go up there physically, of course, because they had limited the funeral to, I think, five persons. So they were able to do a virtual uh, a virtual funeral. Now, I have never attended a vir virtual funeral before, and um, it was a little strange. It was a little odd. It was it was nice to see my cousins there and uh, th those who were there attending the funeral. It was a little surreal. It was a little bit surreal. She had a white and, and yellow and gold coffin uh, or, or you know, coffin there, and, and, and it was done at the burial site. They did the funeral service at the burial site, and they did it live they they uh uh streamed it live so um it was a and, and we did it on the big tv we i set up my my uh, tablet uh hooked it up to the tv and we watched um we watched it on a big screen tv the funeral and it was a little surreal for a couple of reasons one i never attended a virtual um funeral before Hopefully, I, I don't plan to ever again anytime soon. And uh, it was surreal also because they had it on Monday, which was my birthday. <laughs> it was uh, it was kind of weird that uh, that uh, that they actually uh, and here I am. It's my birthday, and I'm I'm attending a funeral, and uh, I'm thinking to myself, I hope this isn't an omen, <laughs> you know, because my. Anne was born on the Fourth of July, so let's let's hope I make it. I hope I'm not. Uh, hope this doesn't mean something like you know, on the Fourth of July. I'm gonna. Uh, no, I hope not. Yeah, I'm not trying to make. Okay, I'm making a light of it. I don't mean to be ma making light of it, but you know, it, it's one of those things that kind of it's in the back of your mind. It's in the back. Well, it's in the back of my mind. It was in the back of my mind. I try not to think about it. And my wife's going that. Eh, you know that's that's nonsense. But you can't help thinking about it. it's like okay she, we had a went to a funeral on my birthday. Is somebody going to be going to a funeral on my birth or or am I going to be, somebody going to be uh, I, I don't know, <laughs> somebody going to be, am I going to be going <laughs> I'm going to, I don't know, <laughs> am I going to be going on her birthday I hope not yeah, I'm trying not to be more about this folks but it's it's stuff you think about. You know, it's stuff you think about at 2 o'clock in the morning when you're laying in bed at night and you're staring up the ceiling and it's dark and it's, it's, it's you know, quiet and, and you can't get to sleep because your mind's racing about different things. And it's one of those things that, you, that just crosses your mind and says, hmm. And then it keeps you awake some more. It, it doesn't help get you to sleep. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm going too far with that. Uh, overdo that. Barnstar says it's a two-way street, Rick. I myself have never met a wine that didn't like me. Oh, I read that. Okay. <laughs> I'm making sure I didn't miss anything in the chat. Uh, let's see what we else have going on there. And uh, Norbert says, I was there the whole week. He's talking about CES. I was there the whole week and never walked so much in my life other than the Marine Corps. And uh, by the way, thank you for your service to the Marines, uh, Norbert. Thank you. I mean that sincerely. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, that's the thing. It, it, everybody come back with stories after going to CES to cover CES. And I always thought, oh, really cool. I'd, let, I'd, I'd love to go there physically and, um, uh, and, 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 and do CES, you know, cover, cover the event. But, uh, yeah, a lot of, 
walking a lot of carrying around a lot of gear and and just uh, just very exhausting i'm sure it was very exhausting um i don't envy you there i i, I don't envy you there uh let's see what we got here let me i'm just catching it let's see uh raise uh, barnstar raises his glass to norbert oh norbert barnstar raised his glass to you uh barnstar says yikes don't get me started on sleepless bed thoughts they're the worst aren't they are they though i mean i i thought it was just me i thought it was just me but everybody goes through this i i guess most everybody goes through this you know you get those sleepless nights and then just your mind's racing just running around all these thoughts and then you start thinking really morbid things and and and, and things like oh, well you know and then, then you get yourself up worked up you get yourself worked up so you really can't sleep and then about five o'clock in the morning you fall asleep and then uh, next thing you know the the alarm clock's waking you up and it's like oh man i slept for like two hours and i gotta go to work and then uh the rest of the day is just like oh uh. but uh really really i i it's uh yeah, yeah. Having having uh, insomnia is just not not a good thing. It's it's never a good thing. Okay, so where are we now? Oh yes. Uh, well, okay, we're getting we're getting on. It's eleven o'clock already. Is it eleven o'clock already? Wow, over eleven o six. How about that? I'm, I said I was going to make this a short show tonight. I promised my wife, as I do every week. I promise her it's going to be a short show. At the very beginning, she says, "Uh huh, uh huh." Now it's kind of like. Mm, yeah yeah i know i've heard it all before uh, i'm gonna try to make it a shorter show two hours is long and i don't uh, uh i you know when i'm done with this show it, it, the show's not over when i'm done with the show i mean the, the show itself for you is over but after that i have uh, I, I have to go download everything and then uh, transfer to to audio audio only files edit those and then put them up for the for the uh for the monday night release of the podcast so i'm off and up when this show ends at 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 midnight or 1 a.m or to whatever it ends i'm up for another couple of hours you know prepping the sh prepping it for the podcast before i go to bed so sometimes i don't go to bed till really really late or early in the morning okay so i, I am trying to follow this though i'm trying to follow this this a little bit Let's see. Uh, oh yes, yes, marionettes. Okay, so we got this this thing called marionette. Okay, the wine we're drinking is called marionette. This is the wine, fifty percent Monastrell, fifty percent uh, Syrah. Now the reason this uh, this uh, it caught my eye here for when I first think of ma a marionette. When you first think of the word marionette, what's the first thing you think of? Yeah, like puppets, right? Yeah, you know, marionette. Okay, and it has kind of a, a guy. Yeah, let me show it up again. Well, you can't really see it from here. Let me let me put the camera up, the close up. But it has a picture of this guy, this way, and he has there's this guy, and he and he's got uh, he's the puppet master, right? The puppet master. That sounds uh, ominous, doesn't it? And then you have the puppet, right? Puppet. So what do you, what's the first? You know, the first thing that comes to my mind is Geppetto and Pinocchio, right? Not necessarily in that order. Pinocchio mostly. Uh, but the second thing that comes to my mind when I think marionette, I think of old TV shows with marionettes. And in particular, um, old TV shows that, uh, that were basically produced with marionettes or maybe more specifically marionation. Because uh, I grew up, I grew up in that era when they were doing those kind of shows. That, you know, they're British shows that, that were doing this thing with marionation. And it actually is kind of a trademark term, I think, marionation is. Um, from Jerry and Sylvia Anderson. Jerry and Sylvia Anderson, they were basically the pioneers. They were basically, they had the, the market cornered for TV shows and movies for marionation, for, for doing TV shows with puppets. And I don't know if you're familiar with a lot of this, but if you're as old as I am, uh, <laughs> and hopefully you're younger, <laughs> but if you're as old as I am, hopefully I'm not that old, uh, <laughs> uh, you, you may remember some of those shows. Uh, and and, and let, me, let me get back to chat for just a second. 
let's see, Barnstar says, talk to that square guy about ending up making a short show a long show. He is a master of the short show. <laughs> I know I've I've uh, I've I've sat in on a couple of his shows. He's uh, I've stayed with him for a, for a long time, even when he didn't know I was there. Uh, believe it or not, don't tell him that. Well, you can't. I don't care. But uh, I'd be lurking for a while before I even make myself known. But uh, uh, the game show thing he did was really cool. But you know what? It's a five hour streaming, five hours, six hours. I, I think he did one that was what, seven hours or something one time. And Norbert says, th oh, by the way, Barnstar, Norbert says, thank you. Thank you for raising your glass to the toast to him. Uh, now, Norbert's on Facebook, and it looks like uh, YouTube as well, and Barnstar's, uh, Barnstar's on Twitch. And Norbert says, thank you, Barnstar. Um, uh, and and Norbert, oh, 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 Norbert, yeah, you know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, well, I'm talking about the marinades, uh, marionettes, marionettes, 14.5% alcohol, folks. <laughs> and I'm not quite halfway in the bottle yet. No, I'm not. Well, we, I'm not. Hopefully, I won't get too far, much farther down. Yes, but Norbert, you've got it using it. You know, I ought to send you something for that. I, I got to send you a prize for that. Yes, Norbert says, Thunderbirds Go was a marionette show, right? Absolutely, you are correct, Norbert. And you know what, Norbert? Because you are correct in this, I'm going to send you a copy. Let's see if I've got a picture up here. Yes, I'm going to send you a copy of 500 Plus Dad Jokes. Fun, funny, clean, corny, and just plain silly jokes. You don't have a copy of that yet, do you? I hope not, because I'm going to send you one. All you, What you want to do is uh, send me... Just send me a, a, an email with your uh, a, a valid um, uh, shipping address. It can be a PO box. I don't care. It's okay. Uh, I'm just going to send it USPS. But uh, just send me a, a valid uh, address where I can send this, and I will send you a copy of 500 plus dad jokes, funny, clean, corny, and just plain silly jokes. It's a lot of fun. I've been sending a lot of these out, and I really enjoyed doing it. And it's just uh, it's really cool. But you deserve a copy of this because. Just because you you nailed it, you nailed it, you got it, you got it. Norbert says, "Awesome, thank you, Norbert." Hey, it's, it's my little birthday gift to you. How about that? Birthday gift to you. Um, okay, yes, Thunderbirds are go. Uh, Thunderbirds, uh, uh, Jerry and Sylvia Anderson basically invented that concept of doing, you know, shooting um, TV, TV shows using all puppets, and. Uh, I do this because my, my friend Jim and I have this thing where we sort of, uh, it's a little joke, inside joke between the two of us where we sit there and, uh, or we stand there, I guess, and, and sort of imitate the, the way the puppets move and talk and everything on the, on the old uh, Thunderbirds TV show, just as a joke. Um, but, uh, yes, Thunderbirds are go is one of the shows. There are some other shows, too. And then Ed, Ed Anthony, if you're still in the chat, I don't know if I have anything else to send you. We've already won some stuff. Uh, <laughs> but um, Ed probably knows, too, trivia buff. And uh, he knows what I'm talking about. Uh, Thunderbirds are go. Uh, yeah, that that was a uh, Thunderbirds movie. They made a movie about Thunderbirds, and then the TV show Thunderbirds uh, are go. I loved that show when I was a kid. I loved that show. But they did some other shows, too. Now, Jerry and Sylvie Anderson did a number of shows. They did the other one that I used to watch sometimes when I could get it was uh, Fireball XL5. It's kind of similar. It's, it, all of these shows kind of had a similar theme to it. A, a lot of them had a similar theme to it. Where it's like in the case of the Thunderbirds, you know, they all had their secret hideaway, and they'd go up there, and they'd, they'd, uh, they'd have all these really, really cool um vehicles you know they had an air vehicle they had a uh, a submarine or something yeah they had a submarine and they had uh uh i think they had a helicopter or something of some sort they had uh, a space they could go up into space they had a spaceship they had all kinds of cool vehicles that they would go around and and do things where they'd be saving the world from stuff you know various disasters would happen or some evil guy some evil some evil scientist, you know, would go up there and, and, and try to take over the world or do something stupid. And uh, uh, they, they would go off and, and use these vehicles to save the world. I remember they did uh, in their, I think it was in their movie, 
they uh, used the submarine because they had to go rescue some people that were trapped underwater, and they used the submarine for that, which was really cool. The thing is about the, the, the marionation, these were all puppets. They were about 12 to 15 inches high, and uh, they, some of them had strings. I, I think later on they kind of worked out a thing where they were able to, uh, they, they had the separated jaws uh, at, at some point, and, then, and after a while they were able to get rid of the separated jaws and just do the lips, go meh, 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 like that. And uh, the eyes would move back and forth, and they could they'd walk around like this, you know, and uh, simulate walking. They just kind of like hop the puppet around. And uh, they they basically shoot from the waist up on these things, and uh, it, it was a lot of fun to watch. It was so much fun to watch. And it wasn't just the puppets because you'd like the scenes. These puppets, everything in that on the sets was so realistic. They did all these miniatures, these very intricate. I wish I could show you pictures, but I can't. Copyright uh, laws and all that. But the uh, you gotta love the copyright laws, right? <laughs> Uh, but they would they would do these elaborate sets, and they were all miniature sets, and they would shoot these things on the sets, and they would just down to the tiniest detail, they would be so accurate about the miniatures. So you'd have these pe uh, these puppets on these miniature sets, and everything looks so real. And then they would make all these miniature vehicles, and they and made these uh, miniature uh, submarines and spaceships and and uh, airplane and kind of flying. Uh, 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 vehicles and things like that but as they went on with some of these series they did the Thunderbirds, they did Fireball XL5, they did uh, what was the other one they did uh, that, that was that was uh, I'm thinking of I'm uh, let's see uh, I, there, were, there were a few of them oh, oh yes, Captain Scarlet, Captain Scarlet was another one Captain Scarlet and um they would really create these amazing puppets, and they would do make these amazing miniatures, and they would have explosions, and then have them do all kinds of things, and and it was so, and yeah, you knew they were miniatures, but it was still a lot of fun to watch, and there were some parts of it, some some ways that they would shoot some of the stuff that looked almost realistic. I mean, almost like you, there were a few of them that you really couldn't tell they were miniatures. Except for the fact, in the back of your mind, you knew that they were miniatures. But in, in some cases, they were shot, shot so well and so realistically that a few of them, you couldn't really tell that they were actually miniatures. They looked like a real thing. Now, here's a, here's a little bit of trivia about that, is that uh, sometimes they were. <laughs> Not so much with the vehicles, but in certain cases. Now, uh, sometimes as they went along, as they progressed, they advanced this this. Uh, this filmmaking technology with the puppets and everything, sometimes they would use real people and insert them, or parts of real people, like a hands, like if, if they were, like the puppet was going to grab a tool or something, they would use an, a real hand to grab the tool instead of the puppet sometimes, and then edit that in. And uh, sometimes they would have a real uh, person in the shot in some way, or you know, part of a real person in there. Somebody walking, you know, that actually have some real, uh, you know, legs and feet walking and things like that. And um, sometimes it was kind of hokey because you could kind of tell, you know, they were cutting back and forth. But sometimes it was. Um, it, it wasn't that easy to tell the way they did it, and uh, it was just kind of cool. It was just kind of fun to watch. Even knowing that they were all puppets, it was a lot of fun to watch. And I really enjoyed those films. But uh, marionettes, yeah. when I think of marionettes, that's one, that's one thing that comes to my mind is this super filmed in super marionation uh, to uh, Jerry and Sylvia Anderson from the U.K., they, they did this in the UK. As a matter of fact, there is a, um, a museum in the UK now. Let me see if I can find out where it is. If I can get some information on where it is. It's in the National Media Museum in Bradford, UK, according to Wikipedia. So uh, they have some of the characters and some of the props and things like that from uh, some of these shows in the National Media Museum. National Media Museum in Bradford, UK, very popular, and uh, they made a movie. They made a, a movie from uh, Thunderbirds, and uh, Thunderbirds. We have it on DVD. I showed it to my kids because I really wanted to expand uh, the uh, you know, give my kids some culture. 
<laughs> and, uh, and and I bought one of the DVDs because I, I saw it and and I thought, oh cool! I haven't seen this in years. I gotta buy this DVD. And then I popped it in and I I told my my son, my daughter, said, oh you gotta watch this movie. It's really cool. It's a marionettes puppets, and they were watching like, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. I think my kids liked it. They thought it was kind of cool, but. Um, it was just really, the, especially back in the 60s when they were doing this sort of thing, back in the 60s, this was pretty innovative stuff. This is kind of, this is not the kind of stuff that most people did in the 60s, you know, when they were shooting video and TV or film and TV, that sort of thing. It was This was very innovative for the time. And uh, my hat's off to Jerry and Sylvia Anderson, who I believe are no longer with us now, but uh, um very cool stuff. And if you ever get a chance, go go check them out. Go go check out some of these shows. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. But uh, Norbert, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, Norbert says, like the original Power Rangers of sorts. Yeah, kind of. Kind of in a way. Yeah, in a, in a way, it's kind of like the Power Rangers. Of course, Power Rangers were, were for basically more of a 90s kind of thing, right? Yeah, I watched a few Power Rangers, too. I did. <laughs> hey, I watched Teletubbies, too. Don't tell anybody. I watched Teletubbies, too. Uh, yeah, not because I had kids. I had young kids, and they liked the Teletubbies. So I would sit there and watch the Teletubbies with them and wait until something else came on that I could watch, and they could go to bed. Uh, yes, I watched the Teletubbies. <clears throat> Yeah, more than I wanted to see. Anyway, uh, Norbert says, I put dad jokes in the chats at conference calls. This will be awesome. Yeah, I, I think you'll enjoy it because I've used a few of these on the show. And, and we've actually had we've actually had dad joke competitions, right, Barnstar? We've had dad, uh, dad joke competitions. We've uh, uh, done whole episodes here where we're, talking, where we're uh, just giving out our best and worst dad jokes. Uh, said... Uh, Barsha says, like the old Rudolph reindeer, whoops, that's kind of, there we go. Like the old Rudolph reindeer Christmas specials, or do they need to have strings to con be considered marination? Good question. Um, and Dwayne uh, Johnson is in the, the Rock Johnson is in the chat as well. Good to see you, Dwayne. Thank you for being here in the chat. Not the same Dwayne Johnson, but it, it's, uh, yeah, he, uh, he's in the chat. Good to see you. And, um, uh, and Barnstar says, yes, the dad joke competitions have been a lot of fun. Yes, they have. We're going to have another one. We'll have another one uh, coming up. Uh, so where was I? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, I lost my train of thought. There we go. Okay, so uh, like the Rudolph the, uh, Reindeer Christmas special, or do they need to have strings to be considered marination? Okay, that's a very good question, Barnstar. That's a very good question. The answer is uh, they're really not the same. Um, marionation, super marionation. They had to have the strings on them. They had to be actual puppets that they were shooting. They would actually shoot those live. They they would they, they would uh, you know the they would have uh, operators, um, marionette operators, puppeteers, puppeteers. Thank you, uh, puppeteers. Um, I don't know who was saying they did. It was just me. Uh, <laughs> puppeteers up there uh, above the set operating them in real time. They let the camera roll and they do it in real time. The difference with Rudolph the, the Red-Nosed Reindeer, which you're alluding to, there were still puppets, but that was not um, uh, alive, done live. It was, it was stop motion. It was stop motion animation. So they would have the puppets there, and but they would move. It was a lot more painstaking of a process because they would... Now, trust me, they, 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 it was just as painstaking for all of these guys to put together all these elaborate sets and everything and the lighting and focusing and setting up the cameras and all this kind of stuff. But the difference is that the uh, stop motion animation, like with Rudolph or with some of the Rankin Bass uh, films that they produced Rudolph, the Red-Nosed Reindeer and uh, uh, was it uh, 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 Frosty the Snowman and, and ones like that. A lot of those. Um, those were stop motion, so they were moved one frame at a time. So you could, they would set up the puppets in the set, and these were some that were they had to remain stiff, they had to remain still, and then they would take it, take one frame of film, 
Then they would move everything that had to be moved just a little bit, just a little bit here and a little bit there. They would take another frame of film and they would move it a little bit more, move a little more here, take another frame of film. I would equate it more towards, uh, I would equate it more with the claymation. Like, for instance, the Nick Park claymations, like uh, Wallace and Gromit. That was really more uh, what the... Uh, now, it wasn't clay. I mean, obviously, they were puppets and not clay in the, in the Rudolph and the Frosted Snowman films and things like that. They were actually stiff puppets, but it was the same process uh, of shooting uh, those. It was the same process as shooting the claymation films, like the Nick Park claymation films, like, uh, like Wallace and Gromit. You know, if you remember, if you've seen the Wallace and Gromit claymation films or Chicken Run, okay, uh, uh, produced by the same company, uh, you know, Chicken Run, all one frame at a time. And, of course, that was done with clay. They had clay figures instead of hard, uh, uh, you know, stiff puppet figures they had uh, with, with wires in the, in, the, uh, uh, in the joints and things like that to keep them stiff. They used claymation, which some of those claymation figures actually had wire frames, too, inside them to keep them stiff, but uh, it was all claymation. Uh, the same, that's the same process, one frame at a time. Now, I've done a little claymation. <laughs> I've done a little claymation in my day, and uh, a little bit. And I have done uh, a bit of stop motion. I have, I am happy to report that this, uh, this coming, uh, for those of you who like to watch uh, some of my old films from back in the day, I am happy to report that I have a few of those films I have a couple of those films standing by that I'm in the process of, of uh, working up. Uh, and I have a few more that I'm going to be transferring over in the, next, uh, in the coming months that, uh, I will, uh, that I'm going to show on Season 3, this upcoming Season 3 of Drink With Rick. And I'm going to debut those. And I think you guys will have a lot of fun with them because they're just, they're just fun to watch. Uh, stop motion and some cut out animation, some things like that. So I, I think um, I'm looking forward to showing this to all you guys because it's, it's just uh, they're just funny to watch. So uh, and Ed says, uh, do you did you watch Supercar? Oh wow, Ed, yeah, Supercar was another one. Supercar. Oh wow, um, you know I never really. I think I saw like part of an episode of Supercar. Uh, Trying to remember, I think it was so long ago. I think I uh, saw part of an episode. I never really saw a whole episode. Never got the whole thing. Uh, but yeah, Ed, that Ed's another one. Supercar. Thank you, Ed. And Norbert says I hated the Teletubbies. <laughs> LOL. Hey, I'm right there with you. <laughs> Run away. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Naughty new new. Okay, I'm uh, okay. All right, uh, Norbert, don't please don't hate me for that. <laughs> it comes from you know, look. It comes from having kids, and uh, I know it comes from having kids and, and being stuck in the same room with them while they're watching Teletubbies. Thomas the Tank Engine, I could get into Teletubby, and, and that's the other thing. Thomas was cool. The old Thomas, the old Thomas, the Tank Engine shows. Those were cool because those were those were miniatures too, and I love that kind of miniature shot uh, stuff. Very similar to the Super Mario Nation. It was similar to that in the sense that it was shot live, but with models. It was all uh, all miniature models. You know? Norbert says, don't recall Supercar, but I loved Speed Racer, Ultraman, and Batman before I got into original Star Trek. You know, um, yes, all of those. All of those. Well, Ultraman I didn't really get into too much, although I was, I was watching... Uh, uh, you know, I was watching stuff like Transformers and Thundercats and things like that. No, I, I didn't really, I don't know. Somehow I didn't like Thundercats, but I, I kind of caught myself watching them some uh, uh, sometimes, and just because it was like uh, it was Thundercats. Uh, yeah, and uh, Ultraman and and uh, He Man. I never really cared much for He Man, but I did go see the movie, and it was just as bad as the cartoon was, <laughs> in my opinion. But uh, you know what? The thing is about He-Man and the Masters Universe, the movie, it was campy. It, it came across to me as campy like uh, the Flash Gordon movie. You know, the, the Flash Gordon movie, I'm talking about not the old serial, but the Flash Gordon movie in the 80s, uh, you know, that, that had uh, the theme music by Queen, which was kind of fun. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I love the movie, and I've seen it not too long ago. 
but uh, to me, He-Man was sort of shot this, in sort of the same, almost the same tongue-in-cheek way as uh, as the Flash Gordon movie. But the Flash Gordon movie did it better, and He-Man just kind of fell flat for me. I, I could not get into He-Man, uh, that that sort of thing. But that that's just that's just me. Uh, that's just me. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, please. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Norbert says Dolph Lundgren is He Man. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was Dolph Lundgren, wasn't it? Maybe that was another reason I didn't really care too much for that movie. I don't know. I was not a Dolph Lundgren fan, but uh, yeah, <laughs> bring back some memories. Uh, but Ed, no, I, I I didn't watch Supercar that much, but. Uh, Oh man, a lot of, but Norbert, you mentioned uh, Speed Racer. Yes, I liked Speed Racer as a kid, but also Astro Boy. I was a big fan. I was a big fan of Astro Boy when I was a kid, and uh, I really enjoyed that show. I I don't think the movie. I I saw the movie when when the movie came out not too long ago with the with the CG and all that kind of stuff, and it was okay, but uh, it it wasn't. Uh, to me, it wasn't completely true to the the original anime cartoon, and I, I preferred the original anime cartoon to the movie, uh, honestly. But that's just me. I'm a purist in that sense. Speaking of purists, uh, yeah, I was going to mention something else. Uh, uh, yeah, Barnstar says, Dwayne is a good friend and a regular in Square Guys chat. Yes, he is. I know. I see him a lot at times. Um, oh, right. The stop, go, clay, uh, animation, claymation. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. And uh, Dwayne says, I really like Chicken Run. I did, too. It was a lot. It was a fun movie, Dwayne. It really was a fun movie. Uh, Barnstar says, I made a claymation short film in high school back in the 90s for a school project. Well, what have to see? I have to say that. I have to see that. Barnstar says, have you seen all the Wallace and Gromit claymation movies, Dwayne? Oh, he's talking to Dwayne. Okay. And... Uh, Algarith is in the chat. Wow, Algarith, it's great to see you. It's been a little while since we've seen you in the chat. It's great to see you here. Thank you for being here. Here's a toast to Algarith. Thank you for being here. Algarith says, uh, he says, my daughter cried on Chicken Run. I uh, told me it was, it was soft graphic, but the scene that cut a chicken neck didn't make it. Yes, uh, yeah, I think, as I recall, I think there was a scene sort of like that and. uh that didn't get the that didn't get into the uh, the final cut. I, I, that wasn't intended to be a, a pun, but it, it, yeah, it was. Um, Barnstar says, "Yeah, that animation isn't Disney certified." Yes. Um, and is Rockman in the chat too? Oh, okay, there you go. Okay, Dwayne. Okay, he's talking about Rockman and Dwayne. Okay, uh, Bloth eighty is in the chat. Bloth eighty is great to see you. It says uh, Bloth eighty Jamila. Yes, Jamila. This is what we're drinking. And uh, Barnstar says, I went crazy over He-Man, the cartoon as a kid. The live action movie was kind of silly, but still fun in a nostalgic sort of way. It was. It was kind of fun. It was, it was, it was, it was pretty dumb, actually. When you go back and, and I think I saw a clip from it, uh, I think it was a while back. And uh, looking back, I don't think it aged too well. He-Man didn't really age too well as far as, I mean, physically, maybe not, but I don't know about Dolph, Dolph, uh, about, uh, Dolph Lundgren. But the, the cartoon, I don't, I'm, I'm talking about, didn't age too well. Uh, it, to me, the, the, the cartoon didn't age that well. There are other cartoons that have aged better. Um, and even as bad as the animation in the Transformers was, I think that I can sit through an episode of the old uh, He-Man show than, than that. Uh, I'm not the He-Man. What am I saying? I can sit through an episode of Transformers more than He-Man. Sorry, I guess the line is good to me a little bit here. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Barnstar says, fun fact, Frank Langella played Skeletor in the He-Man movie. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Uh, I, I believe he did. It wasn't a Frank Langella. Yes, who also played Dracula in, uh, what was the movie? Uh, Ed, you can help me out there. What was the name of that movie that uh, that Frank Langella uh, did uh, with the way he played? Because uh, that's what I know Frank Langella for more than than some of the other films he did. And he did a number of different films, but that, that's what I know him for. It's where he played uh, uh, Dracula, I think, in, in one of the films. Um, 
Barstow says, I had the project on VHS, but the tape didn't survive, unfortunately. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, because I really would have loved to see your, your claymation. I really would have loved to see that. That would have been great. Is that the only, that was the only known tape of it, uh, any, anything? I know a guy, if, now, if the tape, if you do have something that still exists on tape format, I know a guy who can do recovery on that. Uh, I know a guy. Let me know if, if you've got a version of it somewhere uh, or a copy on VHS somewhere. I know a guy that can do some recovery on that. Barnstar says, oh, for sure, He-Man cartoon is a bit tedious to watch nowadays, but there are plenty of other great 80s cartoons that are so much better. Yeah, there are. There, there, there are a lot of them from the 80s that were fun, and, and that's that was part of the heyday of a lot of the uh, uh, weekday cartoons, the Saturday morning cartoons, and things like that. Ed says, Gigantor. Um, Norbert says, okay, Norbert says, I was disappointed with the Speed Racer movie, and Ed says, Gigantor. And uh, yeah, not, yeah, Gigantor. Uh, Ed says Dracula was the name of the movie. Yeah, <laughs> well, thanks, Ed. <laughs> I should have known. Yeah, thanks, Ed. Yeah, I should have known. It was yeah, Dracula was the name of the movie where he played Dracula. That's that's true. He played Dracula and Dracula and we would have been. Uh, yeah, thanks, Ed. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> Not much, apparently. I should have figured that out. Uh, Norbert says that the, <laughs> thank you, Ed. That's good. Uh, Norbert says the Transformer movies were spectacular. Yeah, they were. The last one was. I, okay, I'll tell you what. The first couple of Transformer movies were really, really good. I, I enjoyed those, but the last one, the last one, kind of lost it for me because uh, uh, I think it was the way they shot the action scenes. And it got so silly midway through the movie. I couldn't, I, to be honest, Norbert, I couldn't finish the, the movie. What was the last one? The last one that they, they uh, did. The last one was so kind of silly and over the top script-wise that I, I couldn't finish it. I, I got through the first 30 minutes in the movie and I said, okay, uh, the, I, I can't suspend disbelief for this one. This is, this, is, this is kind of weird. Because they kept going back and forth and they kept... Uh, what they did with that script was that they started off on, on some storyline, and then the thing is, they were introducing so many characters that and, and going back and forth between different scenes with things that I, I really couldn't follow. I, I really couldn't. And, and I'm a Transformers fan. I, I, you know, I used to be. I used to watch. Not really a fan, but I used to watch Transformers. I know the story. I know the characters. But they were going back and forth with all this stuff and and and. Uh, and these quick cuts and these action scenes that didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And I'm thinking, by the time I got 30 minutes into that movie, I was thinking, okay, this isn't making any sense to me. I can't follow this anymore. And so I just bailed on it. But the other two movies, the first two, the first one was great. The first Transformer movie was really good. And then the second one was okay. Yeah, it was pretty good. And and then by the time they, they started going down the franchise, it was, it was starting to get a little silly. But... Uh, uh, I, I, but I did like the first one uh, very much. So uh, Norbert says, uh, surpass my expectations on the Transformer movies. Norbert says, have not seen one with Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, that that's, uh, I think that's the one I'm talking about. Wasn't he in that last one? I think he was. Uh, where, uh, where, and where am I here? Okay, so uh, Barnstar says, I, I had... Okay, Barnstar says, uh, not the only known tape. My former classmate still has a copy, but I haven't talked to him in years. Well, for years, well, you know, if you can get a hold of him, get a hold of him. Send him a bottle of wine if he likes wine. If he doesn't like wine, I guess you're kind of out of luck there. But try to get back in touch with him. If you can have a copy, I, I know a guy you can send it to. It, it's important. These things are important because they're projects you've worked on, things you've done, art, things that you have, have created and accomplished over your life, it's important to try to preserve them, which is what I'm trying to do here with my films. Now, I'm not just showing you my old films just to entertain everybody, which I, I am, but I'm also doing this project because I'm trying to preserve uh, these films because they're, they're, they're not going to last forever. I'm trying to preserve them for, poster for, for posterity, posterior, posterity, both. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to preserve them. So uh, please, uh, you know, if you can, try to do that. That, that makes this important. I think you'll be glad you did. I think you'll be glad you did. Um, 
Let's see, Barnstar says, I just love the voice actor who does Optimus Prime's voice, the good guy robot. Uh, fate rarely calls upon us at a moment of our choosing. Yes. And uh, he says, uh, Dwayne Johnson needs to revitalize the Transformer movie franchise. Somebody does. I'll, I'll say somebody does. Uh, he says, hey, a wine gift. Good idea, Rick. Unfortunately, he doesn't drink at all. Darn it. Does he eat? Send him... Send him a nice cake or something. And preferably a cake that doesn't say. <laughs> okay, I got a story for you. <laughs> Do I have time for a story? It's getting late. Do I have time for This is open chat night. Now I'm still going to talk about Mission Impossible for a second. Because right in line with what we were talking about earlier. Um, yeah, Mission Impossible. That came out of the blue. Uh, so I have a short story. Okay, so for a little while I worked for a company. I'm not going to name the company. Um, I'm not proud of it. It was a, what they what they call a multi-level marketing company. Uh, what they what well what everybody else would call a multi-level marketing company, but they called a uh, a direct they called a direct marketing company because multi-level marketing had such a negative uh, connotation to it, had such a negative uh, had, had had a lot of baggage to that 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 term for good reason. And I was not proud of that because here's the thing. I went into that job interview not knowing that it was a multi, because I didn't really, unfortunately in that case, because I was really looking for something quick to take as a job just in the interim until I could find something I really enjoyed that really made the use of my talents and my abilities and my uh, experience. And so I, I just took on this job for the time being because I needed to have a job for a while. And um, <clears throat> this was just some years back. And it was working in a call center for this company. And uh, this particular company, I did not do my homework. I did not do my homework. So I, I, I answered the job uh, uh, ad, the ad for the job, went in there, and uh, it was like a communications company. I thought, well, okay, this is on my alley, it's a communications company. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to, to get too in the weeds on this because I don't, I don't want to uh, reveal the company's name or anything like that or, or my history with the company. I was, I was not too proud of it. And uh, so I get in, and get in there and they, they give me some tests, you know, typing tests and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, I passed all that, you know. So I get in there for the, for, uh, the job interview and, then, and, and, and I get the job. And I didn't know what this was. I was just, I was supposed to be, I was doing, I was going to be doing tech support for some products related to communications. Lo and behold, when I first show up to work on the first day, I find out exactly it's a multi level marketing company. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, because I have an aversion to multi level marketing companies. I do not. I do not recommend MLMs. I do not condone MLMs. It's not my thing. And uh, I, 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 I have an ethics issue with, with MLMs. And, uh, and, of course, they say, well, we're not an MLM. We're a direct marketing company. Um, same thing. <laughs> How's that different from an MLM? It's the same thing. So, anyway, uh, so I, I'm, I'm stuck there. I've already got the job. I'm stuck there. And so, okay, well, I'll, I'll get through this for a few weeks and, you know, whatever. And I, I was there for almost two years you now. And it was not a fun, it was not, I mean, there were some ups and downs, but it was not the most fun thing I've ever did. And uh, so I, I used to, I used to make, I kind of make poke fun of the company a lot because I was not happy there. I used to poke some fun at the company. And uh, so one time we did this, we had this, and this is the way the company operated, okay? This is one thing. They, they give you, you know, instead of bonuses and things like that, they give you these little freebie trinkets, which were basically worthless. So one time they did this. Uh, now, every once in a while, they throw a little, you know, burger, barbecue kind of thing, uh, you know, give everybody a chance. But they wouldn't let everybody off to go to this thing right away. So if you didn't, if, if your shift, if you were working on that shift and you couldn't make the thing, then you, th it's too bad. Sorry for you. So, uh, it was a little disingenuous. Anyway, so um, so they would do, you know, for the employees, the employees would get together on, on certain days, and the, and the supervisor who felt sorry for the employees would get together sometimes and do like a little potluck. 
on certain times. So we have little potluck things where everybody kind of bring in some food and put it together. You know, while, during our shift, where we would eat during the potluck that we paid for, that we bought, the company absolutely had nothing to do with, wouldn't pay for or any or cover or anything like that. So we do these things. So uh, one of these times, I always get kind of tired of this job anyway. So uh, one day I said, well, I'm going to contribute to the potluck. So I, uh, I borrowed a line from, uh, from Animal House. <laughs> Maybe you know where I'm going with this story. Yeah, I, I, borrowed, I borrowed a gag from Animal House. And I went up to the local Publix bakery and said, uh, I picked out a cake because I was supposed to provide dessert. I was going to provide dessert for this potluck. So I borrowed this, I, I, and I did this on my lunch hour because, you know, they're not going to give you any time off to go do this stuff, right? You've got to do it on a lunch hour. So I go in there and, and I say, okay, I need, I need, I'm going to pick out this cake. Can you write something on it real quick for me? They say, sure. So they wrote out something that I, I had them write on the cake, and I brought it back, and I set it down. I took pictures. I don't have a picture of it. I'm going to show you a picture of it later, but I didn't. I got pictures of it. I should have set one up here tonight and prepare for this story. Um, so did the, so I set up this cake on the table, and everybody's just cracking up because they, 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 they get the joke, you know. And the, and the cake just says, eat me on it. <laughs> And I pretty much summed up my attitude towards the company. <laughs> it just says, eat me on the cake. People were taking pictures of it. I thought it was funny. Um, I, 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 yeah, I didn't last too long for the company. Anyway, so <laughs> that's my little side story. And <laughs> um. Barnstra says, hmm, I think he does eat. Yeah, he does love pizza. Maybe I'll send him a pizza gift card for a great place we used to eat at in his hometown back in the day. That's a great idea. That is a great idea. That, I think he should do that. I think he should do that, Barnstar. Hopefully he has his copy of the VHF ta uh, VHS tape. Uh, VHF, VHS tape. I'm um, in radio mode here. Um, and and he'll he'll loan it to you at least so you can make a copy or you can send it out to, to have uh, to have it restored. I think I, I think that'd be a very cool thing because I'd like to see it. I really would like to see it. That would be very cool. Barnstar says, "Ha ha ha! Oh, you John Belushi W. Yeah, that was a little John Belushi in me. Uh, <laughs> it was. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, transfer." Uh, Norbert says, "Have not seen them with Mark Wahlberg and Ed, Anthony." Oh, Ed, it says. National Days, yes, National Days. We've got to do those before it gets too late, doesn't it? Do it, don't we? Yes, okay, National Days, real quick. National Days. Am I going to do the fireworks for this? I guess so. Why not? What the heck? It's Saturday night. We've got nothing better to do at the moment, right? Except go to sleep. <laughs> National Days, February 20th, 20th, which is going to be um, for about 13 more minutes. Uh, National Days, February 20th, is National Comfy Day. Are you comfy? I hope you're comfy. I hope you're comfy. I am comfy. National Comfy Day. I'll drink to that. It's also National Cherry Pie Day. I love cherry pie. You like cherry pie? I love good cherry pie. Now, some people don't like cherries. And my son, Tommy, who, uh, he likes cherries, but he doesn't like a lot of the red wines that have a cherry taste to it because he says it tastes too much uh, like medicine, you know, like the cherry flavored medicines that they, they used to, uh, like uh, the the um, <laughs> uh, yeah, some of those little medicines they, they the cherry flavored cough syrups and things like that that they uh, that they that would give the kids, and he thought it tastes like cherry cough medicine. So I guess that's why he doesn't care much for the wines. He likes the beers though. He really does like the beers. Um, a national per a cherry pie day. Oh, now my son does love cherry pie. And so do I. It's a uh, love a good cherry pie um, with whipped cream on it or with a scoop of ice cream on it. Oh, a cherry pie with a scoop of ice cream on it. Really, really good. Here's a National Cherry Pie Day. It's also National Muffin Day. I love muffins. I like muffins. I, my wife is really good at making blueberry muffins, and she makes this little cinnamon crumb muffin, like a cinnamon... Sprinkled sugar muffin that are real. Those are really, really good, as you can tell. Uh, so here's National Muffin Day. 
And it's also National Love Your Pet Day. Now, I didn't plan for this. Let me see if I can pull this up somewhere. I got some photos here. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have some photos here. Where are my photos? Ah, yeah. Here we go. Here is uh, here's our pet. This is my son's pet. My son Tommy's pet, Cosmo. Uh, let me see if I've got it up here. There we go. All right. National Love Your Pet Day. We love our pet. We love Cosmo. And I've showed you pictures of Cosmo before. He's a sweet dog. He's a really he's a cockapoo. He's uh, he just turned fourteen uh, in January. I don't know the exact day, but uh, he turned fourteen in January. He is a sweet little dog. He can be he can be a little. Um, he loves to play. He loves to play, and he loves attention, and he can be a little obstinate sometimes if you're not paying attention to him. He wants your attention. So lots of times we, we call him a whiny dog now that he's getting older. He whines a lot. He compl- and, I, and I don't mean whine as in W-I-N-E. I mean not whine as in W-H-I-N-E. He will whine and cry sometimes if he uh, doesn't, uh, nobody's playing with him or whatever. If he wants his toy uh, 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 basket down from the, from the, uh, top of the refrigerator where we keep it so he doesn't get all the toys out everywhere. He, he whines about a lot of things. But he's a really sweet dog. He's just a very sweet dog. And he loves, he just loves his family. And we all love him. That's Cosmo the cockapoo. Home is not a home without a cockapoo. Anyway, here's to National Love Your Pet Day because we do love Cosmo. Cosmo the cockapoo. And uh, let's see, that's February 20th. Those are the national days on February 20th. February 21st. Uh, okay, February 21st is National Grain Free Day. Now, here, okay, here's a conundrum here. Here's a bit of a conundrum. February 21st, we've got two national days there. National Grain Free Day, which means that if you have problems, you know, eating grains, or for those who are on a restricted diet, and I'm not, I'm not um, trying to diminish that at all, because or make too light of that at all, because there are some people that have issues with that. If lack, not lactose, but uh, 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 yeah, if you're intolerant of some grains, or or uh, you know, that's an issue for you. Yes, uh, National Grain Free Day. That's a day to celebrate where you make grain-free meals for those who, who have issues with that. 20, February 21st is also, this is where the conundrum comes in, because grain, uh, National Grain-Free Day, February 21st is also National Sticky Bun Day. National Sticky Bun Day. Who doesn't love a good sticky bun? Well, people that can't eat sticky buns because they're grain-free because it's National Grain-Free Day. So there's the conundrum. You've got National Grain-Free Day and National Sticky Bun Day on the same day. Now, how are you supposed to celebrate that? If you're in a household and half your household uh, can't eat greens and the other half loves sticky bones, how are you going to resolve that? I'll tell you how you resolve that. You open up a bottle of wine and just uh, split the difference. (laughs) To heck with the greens, to heck with the sticky buns, just have some wine. Because it's not National Wine Free Day, and every day is a day for wine. There you go. National Grain Free Day, National Sticky Bun Day. And those are the national days for Sunday, February 21st. Thank you, Ed. Once again, my good friend Ed, who is keeping me honest, keeping me straight for uh, keeping the national days uh, in the show. And Norbert says, three indoor cats, three dogs, and we have anywhere from 8 to 13 community cats that we care for. My goodness, Norbert. Uh, My good... I didn't say that right. I'm sorry, Norbert. <laughs> the wine is getting to me now. My goodness, Norbert. Three indoor cats and three dogs. That's six pets right there. And eight to 13 community cats that we care for. Wow. Uh, now that's dedication that is devoted. Norbert, I have to say you are a true pet lover. You are. You are a true animal lover. And uh, here's to you, Norbert. And if I drink any more of these, 
If I drink any more of this wine, I'm really going to have a problem mixing my merds up as I do right now. Okay, back to the chat and Twitch here. It says, um, Barnstar says, National loved your pet day. I just love my goats. I spoil them all the time. True story. Oh, you have goats. We had goats. When I was a kid, we had goats. We had uh, my mom... We had a couple of goats. There's a story behind this. Yeah, there is. Oh, am I going along? Goodness. It's almost 12 o'clock. I said I was going to do a short show. Sorry, Chi. <laughs> We're already past that point, aren't we? Okay, I got to tell this story, okay? This is a kind of a Disney story, sort of. And I know you love the Disney stories. Okay, when I first got my job at Disney, I, I went to the job interview. My dad drove me to the job interview at Disney. We lived in Winter Park. Disney's way out in, in, in you know, uh, at Disney, where it always is. Uh, so it was about a 45-minute drive. So my dad drove me out there for this job interview. We came back. On our way back from the job interview, uh, we were passing through. I think we were on 535, uh, uh, somewhere on there. We, we were at the, the time, there were no big, humongous highways out there. This was the very beginning. Uh, you know, Disney hadn't been around that long. And... Um, so there was a lot of countryside. There were a lot of farms, and a lot of farmland, and things like that. My dad's, my dad's driving me back. And on the way back, we pass by a farm, and there's a big sign that says, Goats for Sale. Goats for Sale. Now, my dad, being a – I knew my dad was going to stop. <laughs> I knew he was. My dad, being someone who was, an, who was an organic gardener, had a garden, and he really aspired to kind of do his own farming. Now, he wasn't exactly – Oliver Wendell Douglas. He wasn't exactly Oliver Wendell Douglas in the sense that he wanted to live on a farm and all that kind of but he did kind of have that blood in him. So he says, goes for sale. Let's stop and check it out. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, of course, you know, I, I'm just the passenger. I'm like, oh, okay, let's go stop and see some goats. So we stopped, we stopped there. I don't remember how long we were there. I really don't. My memory's kind of fuzzy on a lot of that. It's fuzzier now with this wine. We're there for a little while. The next thing I know, we've got a pair of goats in our station wagon, and we're driving home with a pair of goats, with two goats, a male and a female goat, in our station wagon. And and um, and I'm looking at him. It's like, you know, how are you going to explain this to mom? <laughs> you know? What are you going to tell mom? You know, it's like, oh, yeah, she'll be okay with it. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, oh, boy, is there going to be a surprise in order? So we get home. Now, now we lived, we lived on Tierra Circle. We lived in, we lived in a subdivision in Winter Park, in a subdivision off 436, State Road 436, in Winter Park, in a subdivision in Seminole County. And uh, we were on, technically we weren't supposed to have. It was not zoned for farmland. It's technically we weren't supposed to have livestock on. And, and there was a there was a uh, an HOA. There was a homeowner association. Um, but I wasn't really thinking about that. My my dad apparently he didn't care. So we drive home with these two goats. A, a pair of goats, and they were little miniature goats. They were small goats. We drive home with these goats, and uh, of course, my mom, you know, she's like, "Okay, did Rick get the job? Wait, are those goats?" <laughs> that was basically as far as I didn't get a chance to say, "Hey, mom, I got the job." It was more like, uh, "Did Rick the, get the job?" And oh, hey, are those goats? <laughs> They're goats. You brought home, you went, you went to get our son a job at Disney World and you came home with a pair of goats. There's, there must be a story to this. And yes, and I'm telling it to you right now, <laughs> unexpectedly. So, um, yes, we brought home a pair of goats and he penned them up in the middle of the backyard. And my mom named them, uh, she named them Abraham and Sarah. Uh, you know, biblical names, Abraham and Sarah. And uh, not too long after, these two goats had a kid, a goat kid, okay, a kid. And uh, I think, uh, what did she call him? She called him uh, Isaac. 
she named the goat Isaac, which seemed kind of appropriate, I guess. So uh, we had Abraham, Sarah, and Isaac. So uh, those were the, the and we, we are in a subdivision. We also had chickens. We had 11 chickens in the chicken coop. My dad had the chicken coop. He built the chicken coop on the other side of the fence because the other side of the fence was unincorporated Seminole County. And he figured that if the county came after him for having chickens on the property, that technically they weren't on our property. He was thinking... Technically, they weren't on our property. They were on the other side of the They were still attached to the fence, but they were on the other side in a chicken coop that he built up against the fence. But technically, they were in the, they were on county property. And because the county didn't own the chickens, because they were on county property that was an unincorporated Seminole County at the time, they couldn't do anything about it. So my dad got to keep the chickens. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, my dad, well... <laughs> He made his own wine, and he had chicken. He had goats, and he had chickens. Um, that was my dad. Okay. Well, anyway, so uh, it's getting late. I was going to talk about Mission Impossible. I didn't get that far, did I? So uh, where are we? A square guy. You done with the lawn? The square guy. You done, done mowing your lawn? Uh, your mom's lawn? Your mom's your lawn's mom? Your mom's lawn? Okay. Uh, yes, I've had too much. So we're going to end it now. Uh, the square guy says, "Ha ha ha! That for gone then, huh?" Okay, uh, yeah, Disney story, yes. Um, let's see, what else did I miss here? The three, uh, Square Guy says, oh, Square Guy says, goats for sale, the three sweetest, wor uh, the three sweetest words in the English language. I must mess that up, didn't I? The, sweet, the three sweetish words in the English language, yeah. Uh, this, the three sweetest words in the English language. Yes, I've had enough. Okay, so uh, uh, Barnstar says, uh, oh, that square guy says, that's amazing. <laughs> Barnstar says, wait, are those goats? Yes. Um, <laughs> Barnstar says, very nice. I have half a dozen uh, barred rock hens who live next door to the goats, and during the day they love to mingle. They do, don't they? Uh, that's how That's how hens are. Um, uh, yeah, square guy says, LOL, time to back off the wine for sure. Yes. Uh, my, clearly the wine was quite strong. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wixed up my merch again. <laughs> so, uh, if anybody's still with us on Facebook, all right, I think it's time to close up the stream, right? I did want to make a mention of Mission Impossible because uh, we were talking about old TV shows. It had nothing to do with marionettes or marionation, but uh, my wife and I, my wife G and I, have been watching uh, old episodes of Mission Impossible, and I have a little bit of a rant on that, which I guess I can't really go into tonight too much, but I'm going to go into it anyway for a moment. The, but the rant is, I love Mission Impossible. When I was a kid, I was watching Mission Impossible. It came on Sunday nights when I was a kid, and I used to love that show. And um, and even now the 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 uh, reruns they, they run them on Pluto TV which is internet TV and we watch she and I stay up late night and sometimes watch them on on Pluto TV and they run them in sequential order 176 episodes they did of Mission Impossible and it, it was a fun show I mean it was a fun show um, my rant on this is Tom Cruise now Tom if you're watching this show which you probably aren't but if you were I've got a few choice words for you. And the choice words is stop screwing up the show. Because um, the original Mission Impossible show was a great show, great premise. And yeah, it had its, uh, it, it has duds for epi certain episodes. But for the most part, it was a really cool premise, a really cool show. And you can't beat Lalo Schifrin's uh, theme music, right? You can't. You, you just can't. Um, and. Um, the thing is, to me, Peter Graves, Jim Phelps, he was, he, you know, he was a dedicated, he was a, he was, he was dedicated to his job and a true, a true hero, a true uh, a patriot, right? And here comes Tom Cruise with his Mission Impossible movies. I saw the first Mission Impossible movie and it was, yeah, it was, it was okay. You know, it was, it was pretty easy. A lot of tense moments there. But then they, I think it was a second or third movie. Which one is the one that they that they that they made Jim Phelps 
the 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 antagonist and made him a traitor. And it was right there that I quit watching. That was the last Mission Impossible movie I went to see. That was the last one because right then when they did introduce him as the traitor, I said, "Okay, that's it. This franchise is done for me. I'm done with these movies. These these I, I can." I, I, I get that, you know, I, I, was, I was tolerating, I was tolerating the fact that, that Tom Cruise was making this a vehicle for him, okay? It was a, it basically a vehicle for Tom Cruise to, to, to go off and do his stunts and things like that and be Tom Cruise. Okay, I could deal with that. But when they made Jim Phelps, Jim Phelps the, uh, the antagonist, that was too much. It kind of broke it for me with that series. And I said, uh-uh, I'm not watching any more of these Mission Impossible movies. And I know there are some people that love them. But a lot of those people that love those movies are people that did not grow up with the original series and that attached themselves to the original series. Uh, a lot of them did. And to, 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 uh, to do that, to me, I thought was kind of sacrilege to the, to the series. And that was kind of when I, I, I lost interest. And then as... as Tom Cruise has continued to crank out these movies. It's really more of a, it's it's really more about Tom Cruise. It's not about the Impossible Mission Force. It's not about the missions anymore. It's about Tom Cruise, as you know, whatever character he's playing. So uh, to to me, I'm saying Tom Cruise, you're watching. Stop doing that. Do something else. Okay, you've already ruined that. You've ruined the 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 series for me. You've ruined Mission Impossible for me. Thank you very much, Tom Cruise. Uh, no toast to you, Tom Cruise. Okay, thank you. And that's my rant for tonight. Anyway, so um, that's that's all I got, and, and and it was a lot, and I was trying to keep it short, but I didn't, and uh, it's gonna be a long night. <laughs> Uh, Square Guy says, uh, oh, uh, that was, uh, okay, Barnstar says, uh, that Square Guy, your lawn has a mom. Yeah, I messed that up, didn't I? Okay, I sort of did it on purpose, kind of accidentally on purpose. Um, Barnstar says, it's actually a reboot of the franchise. Uh, you know what? Yeah, Barnstar says, Mission Cruise, Tom Possible. That, that's really much for turning into a... It's a reboot of the franchise, basically, but they incorporated a lot of the originals in there. Where in the first movie, they killed them all off, which I thought was kind of, uh, I don't know. Got my own thoughts on that. But uh, the thing is that uh, you can like the movies if you want to. I, I You can. I'm not going to stop you from liking the movies. I just don't like the movies anymore. It's kind of ruined the movies for me. I'm going to stick with the original show because the original show, as, as campy as it got sometimes, is, is, is a little bit out of, of, of the realm of, of believability as it got at certain times. It was still a cool show. It really, and it, it is. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yes, that really is all I've got tonight. I don't know. I want to know what Ed thinks about uh, uh, a mission impo the Mission Impossible. Ed, what do you think? The movies or the TV show? I'm wondering if Ed actually went to see the movies because I know he's a he's a purist. I know you're a purist, Ed. And and uh, the movies or the TV show? Maybe uh, maybe you did like the movies. It's okay. It's all right. It's cool. We're still friends. Look, you can like the movies if I don't. We're still friends. Don't worry about it, any of you guys. Okay. Just <laughs> just uh, just me and the wine talking, and mostly at this point, it's mostly just the wine. Anyway, so that's what I've got for tonight. Uh, it's time to close it up. Once again, we've been drinking this. We've been drinking the marionette, and boy, we've been drink. I've been drinking it. Whew. Fourteen point point. Fourteen point five percent alcohol, ABV, alcohol by volume. The seven hundred fifty milliliter bottle, and uh, I think I'm going to be feeling it tomorrow. Fifty percent Monastrell, fifty percent Syrah. It is a pretty good wine. It it has hints of. Um, on the nose, it had a little bit of, uh, it, it, it smelled a little oaky, smelled a little uh, uh, like wet leaves and stuff, but it, it a little earthy. But uh, on the palate, it's really all about blueberry, blackberry, it's um, some licorice. Uh, I'm getting, that's a lot of what I'm getting in here, and I like those flavors. I like all three of those flavors, mostly the blueberry I like very much. And as it's opened up, 
as it's opened up, I think I'm getting a hint of, um, I think I'm getting a hint of cherry too, as it's opened up. Very good wine. I think it goes, it's, it went pretty well with the, really well with the steak. It went uh, pretty well with the pizza. It was uh, pretty decent with the ziti, the baked ziti, and the cheeses, all the cheeses it worked well with. I recommend this wine. It's actually pretty good. $8.99 is what I paid for it. $9.99 is the median price from what I've seen online. Anyway, that's the that's my final review of this wine. I want to thank everybody who joined me, everyone who joined me in the chat, and a lot of people joined me in the chat. My good friend Ed and Anthony and Norbert Davis, once again, happy birthday to you, Norbert. Uh, Norbert, I, it's the wine talk, and I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> I'm getting tongue-tied, tongue-twisted. Norbert, thank you for being here. My lovely wife, Chi, as always. I don't know if she's still watching. She's probably fallen asleep by now. <laughs> Going, oh, yeah, you said it was going to be done. 45 minutes ago. Uh, uh, and who else do I have in the chat? Uh, let's see. I think that was uh, mostly on Facebook. Anybody, anybody we missed on Facebook? I know there are people watching on Facebook. Let's see. Tim, if you're watching on Facebook, thank you. And uh, let's see. Norbert also on YouTube. On Twitch, we have all our, uh, we have all our Twitch family here. We've got uh, Barnstar. That's, uh, I can't even pronounce it anymore. Theo Baki Barnstar now. Is that what it is? And, of course, uh, my good friend, uh, the square guy. And uh, Algorith. Algorith, it's good to see you. It's been a while since I've seen you in there, but thanks for, for being here. And uh, Bloth80. And uh, thank you for being here in the chat. Who else did I miss? I know I missed somebody else. I, I hate missing anybody in the chat. Who's in the chat? I know the people were lurking in the chat. I know. I know. Uh, Dwayne. Dwayne Johnson, thank you for being here in the chat. It's always good to see you, my friend. I want to thank you all for being here tonight with me. It is an honor and a pleasure to have you here. Next week, we've got, we're, we, we started the first season with uh, Cabernet. Excuse me. With, with the Cabernet, we're going to end the second season with the Cabernet. Next week is, is just to give you a heads up, next week is uh, the end of season two. Uh, we're going to have a, a show for you. I'm going to have a show for you. And uh, then we're going to go on a two-week two week break until we do season, fee, uh, t season three. Yes, that's the wine. <laughs> season three. See, I'm, I have no shame. I admit it. Season three. I'm going to be doing some repairs to the studio. I'm going to be doing some upgrades, finishing up some upgrades. I'm excited to tell you that I have a brand new computer that I built last week that I'm going to be incorporating into this. I've got a lot of fun stuff, and I'll go into that more next week. Uh, stick around next week. I'll tell you all about it next week. Anyway, uh, thank you for being here with me tonight. Uh, it's been a great, great time. And uh, please join me here next week. Please do not drink and drive. Remember that. Do not drink and drive. Drink in the comfort of your home, your apartment, your hotel, your, 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 your wherever you are. Call an Uber, call a Lyft, call a cab if you need to. Do not drink and drive. Do not text and drive, please. That's also uh, a bad thing. Because uh, I want you to have a great week. But most of all, I want you to have a safe week. So you can all join me here next week. For the Saturday Night Wine Stream. And we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.